there are any questions pertaining to your visit to the mosque, we can get started while the tea and the cook is getting ready for us. If you like, make use of our valuable time. Your time is valuable. Mm. So, yes, my son. Just one question. I see there's a lot of alterations going on. Where did your finance come from for those alterations? It's public money. Is it just public, public from Durban? Public, public. No, no, could be from Natal, from South Africa. From but South usually, Africa itself? usually yeah. charity begins at home. We start with Durban. Mm. Yeah. And uh, if we still need, we can go to Marisburg, to Stanger, to Port Shefton, and spread out the community. All right. The so community. There's no international funding on this mosque? No. Uh, there are about 400 mosques in the country. Yeah. And uh, almost 99% or 100% of them are funded by the South African Muslims. All right. Except for one. There's one in, uh, in Lenasia called Nurul Islam Mosque that was funded by the Arabs. But all these 400, the 399, were funded by the Muslims of South Africa. Yeah. How many people would be able to fit into the mosque at capacity and how many meetings or services do you have there? What, yes. what would be your amount of imams working there? Yes, yes. Uh, this mosque here is reputed to be the largest south of the equator because most of the Muslim countries are in the northern hemisphere. But south of the equator, uh, the people here have been boasting that this is the largest. And on Fridays, we accommodate about 5,000 people, top and bottom. What you must have seen is only the top, because the bottom is under repair. And then the overflow of the congregation also goes onto the flat roof, you know, the overflow. Mm -hmm. First we start at the bottom, it's full, it goes to the top, if it gets full, then the overflow goes to the top, flat roof. We also offer our devotion and prayer. Yes, my son. Why did, it, why did people have to take off the shoes? Is it a sign of respect? Yes. Yes. You see, this is, we are following the commandment as given by God Almighty to the Holy Prophet Moses. If you remember, in the Old Testament we read that when Moses was on Mount Sinai, God spoke to him and he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. In respect of that commandment, we Muslims, we take off our shoes. And if there was much time, the man would have explained that before we go in for prayer, we make ablution. In other words, all the exposed parts of the body are being washed. The hands, the feet, the nostrils, the nape of the neck, gargling the mouth, brushing the teeth. This the Muslim does five times a day, every day of the year. The one who is particular with his prayers. And purely from the hygienic point of view, no one is going to find fault with the person who washes himself five times a day. It's a good hygienic practice. Everybody agrees. <laughs> Secondly, this ablution serves a certain psychological purposes, meaning mentally it's preparing us for prayer. We are washing not because we are dirty. We might have just had a shower. But now we are going through a formality that we attune ourselves Psychologically, we are preparing ourselves that we are going to meet our Lord. We are going to stand before Him. And thirdly, this is also another commandment given by God Almighty to the Holy Prophet Moses. In the book of Exodus, that is the second book of the Bible, it is written, And Moses and Aaron and their sons washed their hands and their feet thereat. When they went into the tent of the congregation, they washed as the Lord commanded Moses. So we Muslims are still fulfilling another biblical commandment. Though we haven't got the labor of a Jew, nor yet that of a Christian, yet in all humility we claim that we are more Jewish than the Jews and more Christians than the Christians. In this, that we are trying to follow in the footsteps of the prophets. So, in every aspect of the Muslim prayer, you see, if you had been at prayer time, you would have watched the Muslim at actually at prayer. We go into different positions. Facing the direction of Mecca, we say, Allahu Akbar meaning Allah is the greatest. With folded arms, we read chapters and verses from the Holy Quran, celebrating the praises of God. And we go into different postures. And in every posture, we celebrate His praises. Reaching the ultimate, that we go down to the ground, with the forehead touching the earth, in that position we say, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la, 
Subhana Rabbi al-A'la, Subhana Rabbi al-A'la, which is in Arabic, which means glory to God in the highest, glory to God in the highest, glory to God in the highest. The highest part of man goes down to the lowest before his maker and we praise him to the highest. This is the form of our prayer. And this is also biblical. Because this is how all the prophets prayed. When I say all the prophets prayed, it sounds like a sweep, sweeping generalization. But it is not so. If you have been reading your own holy scriptures, you will be able to confirm what I'm going to quote you now. And I quote from the Old Testament. It reads, And Abraham fell on his face and prayed to God. And it reads again, And Moses and Aaron fell on their faces and prayed to God. And again, And Joshua fell on his face and prayed to God. When we come to the New Testament, we learn that Jesus Christ, towards his last days on earth, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane with his disciples. And he said, wait and watch. Look out. Pass off. Because the Jews were after his life. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed to God. Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass away from me. Meaning, remove the difficulty from me. But not as I will, but as thou wilt. And then I leave it to you. I want you to save me, my Lord. But if it is your will, whatever you will, I am prepared to submit. <coughs> One word for that in the Islamic language is a Muslim. He said, I am a Muslim. A Muslim is one who submits his will to the will of God. He submitted. Whatever you want to do, I am prepared to do. But how did he do it? And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed to God. I have been asking Westerners, how does a man fall on his face and pray? Except the way we Muslims do. Can a circus acrobat do any better than that? Falling on your face and praying. Can you imagine another way of falling on your face? And Abraham, and Moses, and Aaron, and Joshua, and Jesus, and Muhammad. They all fell on their faces, faces and prayed to God. But the modern gentleman is more worried about the creases on his trousers than humbling before God. The Americans, however, are learning what they call transcendental meditation. A word two yards long from the Hindus which is the common property of every Jew, every Christian, and every Muslim, if they only followed in the footsteps of their own prophets. But we are cleverer than they, aren't we? So we sit on our backside, and we tell God what to do, and little wonder he's not listening. So we are thinking that maybe God is deaf, or maybe that he's, de he's dead. I say he's neither deaf nor dead. There is a way of approach which the spiritual physicians of mankind, they taught us. And we would do well to follow them. Abraham, and Moses, and Aaron, and Joshua and Jesus and they all fell on their faces and prayed. This is the humblest posture that you can reach on this earthly existence before the Lord. So this was the form of our prayer. But if you were there at prayer time, you would have been able to watch all these things and you could have asked further questions. But yes, my son. In the Old Testament, we read that those places were holy because God said they were holy. Yes. When did this ground become holy? Yes. Mm. To us, every inch of ground on earth is holy. To the Muslim, every place is a place of prayer. We have no such place as you know that this is Mispa, the place where the stone is placed and there you go and pray. We can go and pray anywhere, parks, gardens, seashore, anytime when the prayer time comes along, facing in the direction, you can stand up and say Allahu Akbar and get started. Every piece of ground on earth is holy unto the Lord. But we have places appointed like the mosque for people to congregate together. Because the family that prays together, their hearts remain together. So we have certain advantages getting together five times a day. Five times a day you meet people of different races. See, the African is there, he is making the ablution. And after ablution he's using the towels that are there to wipe his face. I go along on the same tap, I make the ablution similar to he did, and I use the same towel. So in other words, it creates a bond. Five times a day, when we finish our prayer, every time we finish our prayer, we say Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So peace and blessings of God to everybody to the right of me. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And peace and blessings of God to everybody to the left of me. And when I said this, there was an African here. This side, I said, hey, it's a Chinese here. This side is a European here. And so on and so on. Five times a day, I says, I wish you well, my brother. I wish you well, my brother. So this is a system of eliminating racism. We Muslims are the least racist of any other community on earth. We don't say we are immaculate. But we are the least racist because five times a day we are going through the process of rubbing shoulders, standing shoulder to shoulder. No gaps left between one devotee and another. We are told that even if it's a hot day, I can't say I stand near the window. So fill the gaps, fill the rows immediately behind the Imam. 
So there is no excuse for finding some excuse that I don't like to stand next to the African guy, you know, so I said, I stand near the window mm -hmm. because it's hot. No, no, no excuse. So five times a day, the people are brought together. Just my sister. Um, when you say the Muslims are the least racist in the world, um, I just ask a comment about the, first of all, the Muslim slave trade was very much active. Then also, one of the countries in Africa, I think it's Mar Mauritania, Mauritania? Mauritania, yes. That uh, is Muslim-led country where the slave trade is actually active today. So how do you reconcile that? Yes. Now, we said, look, with regards to the slave trade, the Arabs, you know, they were a seafaring nation. They went out to do business and maybe they were also involved in this quick money, easy money. But those slaves that they carried, if they ever took them to Arabia, you can't find a single slave community in the Arab world. That you see, uh, this Gaddafi of Libya, when you look at him, he's African. Maybe his great grandfather was a slave. Nasser of Egypt, when you look at him, he looks like an African. Maybe his great grandfathers were slaves, but that slavery does not remain in the mind of the Arab that look, you come from a slave community, your great grandfather was a slave, so they're all absorbed. But it goes to the credit of the Christians. They, they took across the Atlantic 25 million Negroes. Christians took them there, not the Arabs. And they are still a landmark there. There are 40 million Negroes there, children of those slaves, and in the Caribbean. This is to the credit of the Christians. So we said, look, we are not, we're not going to start pointing finger at the Muslim might have done it. Yes, yes. In the name of religion, people have done it. We went to war, First World War, Second World War. In the name of peace, we went to war. Hitler, what, what he did? Hmm, I have no right to point a finger at you. And says, look, this is Christianity. Oh, America, there are 25 million sodomites in America at the moment, whom you call gays. 25 million. Now, I'm going to say, look, this is your Christianity. No, I have no right to do that. As you have no right to point, I said, Mauritania, look, I don't know. Maybe in their culture, the damn thing still exists. But Islam is the foremost, any excuse, free the slave, any excuse, the Quran lays out for any little mistake you make, is a free the slave. As an expiation for your sins, free the slave. The Bible, there is not one word in the word of Jesus Christ that they ever said free the slave. Muhammad said free the slave. He freed the slaves. He himself freed his slaves. How? Yes, my son. Mr. Leader, um, Muhammad was, of course, a uh, merchant. So he was involved in the slave trade at that time. Can you think of examples where he freed slaves? Because I do know this, the Christians did free the slaves. In fact, the Negroes in America had the highest standards of living of any black people in the world. They had the highest standard of education of anywhere in the world. The Christians, to their credit, did end the slave trade, starting in Britain, spreading throughout in America before the Civil War to end it ahead of the Muslims ending slavery in their countries, as far as my understanding of history goes. Right. With regards to the Prophet Muhammad, at the age of 12, he went out with a caravan journey with his uncle. Then we read again at the age of 25, as an agent for a lady called Khadija, a widow, he went out to do business. And he was no prophet. And he went to deal with business. What did he do business with? He didn't carry slaves with him. From Arabia, where did he get the slaves from Arabia? He was carrying merchandise to go and sell to the people in Syria and to the Lebanon and these areas here. There's only two trips are a credit to him. One at the age of 12 and one at the age of 25. And there was no slaves involved. We know this for a fact. There were no slaves. There were, no, no, there were slaves in Arabia. Yeah, but there were the no time. slaves in his caravan. No, no, there were no slaves in his caravan. We are sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So at the age of 40, for the first time, God Almighty communicates with him. Prior to that, he was an ordinary businessman, as you say. Businessman, camel driver. Right. Had he died before the age of 40, we would have never heard his name. He was a good man, accepted as a good man among his people according to their standards. That he was a faithful person, a tr 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 truthful person. And they gave him that credit. They called him as Wadul Amin, a person who fulfills his promises and a man of truth. Trustworthy. That's the title they gave him. So had he died, I mean, good people like this exist in all parts of the world at all times. We would never have heard about Muhammad. But at the age of 40, he is in a cave some three miles north of the city of Mecca. And he sees a vision. And in that vision, the archangel comes and commands him in his mother tongue, in his Arabic language. 
اقراء which means read and Muhammad being unlearned naturally he responds he's terrified because he was not bargaining for this side of a sort of experience that you know he was planning for a graduation ceremony and it's now taking place it's with happiness he says we go along to put the cap on and the gown on it's no, there was no such preparation this angel terrifies him and in trepidation he cries out he says ma ana bi qari'in he said I'm not learned so the angel of God commands him a second time iqra read and again Muhammad says ma ana bi qari'in he said I'm not learned the third time the angel of God embraces him hard and says iqra bismi rabbika allazi khalaq he said read in the name of the Lord and cherisher who created so now Muhammad grasps that what he was required to do was to repeat because this Arabic word Iqra means to read, to recite, to rehearse, to repeat. So he repeated the words. Iqra bismi rabbi kallazi khalaq. So read in the name of the Lord and Church who created. So he said Iqra bismi rabbi kallazi khalaq. So khalaq al-insana min alak. He says he who created man from a mere plot of congealed blood. So he says khalaq al-insana min alak. He said Iqra wa rabbu kal akram. So read and the Lord is most bountiful. So he said Iqra wa rabbu kal akram. So Allah zee Allah ma bil kalam. He said he who taught the use of the pen. So he says Allah zee Allah ma bil kalam. So Allah mal insana ma alam ya alam. So he taught man that which he knew not. So he says Allah mal insana ma alam ya alam. These were the first five verses that he heard. And as soon as the angel departed, terrified, sweating all over, he runs home uh, three miles south to Mecca to his dear wife Khadija, and he says, "Cover me up, cover me up. There's something terrible has happened." So she covers him up. When he gets out of his excitement, he explains to her what he had seen and what he had heard. Fearing that something has gone wrong with him. Now, this is not the way imposters behave. An Arab telling you that he ran home to his wife is the most despicable thing for an Arab to confess. Muhammad confesses, I ran home to my wife and I told her, cover me up, cover me up. And this was his reaction. This were the first five verses. And subsequently, during the next 23 years of his prophetic life, according to the needs of the time, according to the problems that came cropped up, he was given verses, chapters, which are now recorded in the Quran, this Quran here. So, I, I, <laughs> you had something to say. May I ask a further question? Yes. yes. As Christians, and all of us here are Christians, we are born again, we're evangelical, we are not the kind of Christians who are liberal in the sense of questioning the authority of God's word. All of us are pro-life, and we praise God that Islam is also against abortion and that a true Muslim is also against evolution and we are for creation by God in six days. We here are against pornography, as we know a true Muslim should be. Right. And we are grateful that Muslims have made a stand against blasphemy, right. against Jesus, like right. the last right. temptation right. of Christ. Right. So we have some things in common. Right. We are monotheistic. Right. But what we're concerned about is this. In our Bible, Galatians 1, the Lord warns us that we must not accept any other gospel, right. even if an angel or one of the apostles should bring it. Right. May, if he brings a gospel different from the revelation God has already given, right. through Moses, through Jesus, if he brings one that's different, he must be accursed. Right. And we read in 2 Corinthians 11 that Satan can turn himself into an angel of light. Right. And we read in Deuteronomy 18 that a prophet's words must be fulfilled and there must be more than two witnesses to confirm something. Right. We are concerned about this. If God has spoken through Muhammad, yes. what confirmation is there? Especially considering as Christians, we want to be true to God's word. He has warned us not to be deceived by false prophets, not to be deceived by angels, not to be deceived by Satan as an angel of light. Right. We are told there must be many witnesses. Right. How can we as Christians believe that what is in Islam is true to the continuing revelation of God throughout the Old and New Testament of the Bible, and it is perfectly consistent with the revelation that God gave in His Son, Jesus Christ? Um, what could you tell us on this? Yes. Place? You see, first is just at Galatians. You Galatians. quoted from Galatians. He is talking about a gospel, mm -hmm. another gospel. Now, Galatians itself is another gospel. You see, when Galatians was written by Paul, yeah. right? <coughs> did he have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in his hands? Perhaps one or two. Hmm? No, no, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They were not written did he say that I am talking about the gospel of Saint Matthew? according to St. Matthew, the Gospel according to St. Mark, the Gospel according to St. Luke, the Gospel according to St. John. Did he have that? Did he have the book of Acts in his hands? Can I answer that, Chief, on that? No. Maybe not. Galatians seems to have been written before those Gospels. Right. But they were not together. He didn't know that he was talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. They were not correct. 
they were not circulated. The way we have today, we have it all in a book. All the books are in one place. Yes. Right. So now he is not talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Yeah. See, he's writing his own gospel, mm -hmm. which, one, which, is, which is besides what has been already given. He is writing his own to Timothy, to, to Corinthians, to Philippians. To, he is writing his own. And there is a conflict between Peter and Paul that you know in the Bible. Temporary conflict. Whatever it is. Temporary. Temporary. <laughs> but now there is a conflict. That means this gospel is different from that gospel. If there is a conflict. Circumcision. Peter stands for circumcision. Paul says circumcision is nothing and non-circumcision is nothing. So there is a conflict. This is the fundamental principle of Judaism. That if you are the children of Abraham, you have to follow the covenant that Abraham had entered with, into with God. But Mr. Dead, by, by Acts 11, Peter had realized that circumcision was well, essential let, let, for let, the Gentiles. No, 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 we're not going to go into we we to argue about different points. Oh, no, 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 I'm answering your question. Okay. You see, Jesus said, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are raving wolves. By the fruits you shall know them. How are you going to know the proof from the false? The fruit. By the fruits. So he didn't say, after me there shall be no prophet. If a person comes along claiming to be a messiah, claiming to be a prophet, test him by his fruits. So if this is the test he gave, and in the first epistle of John, chapter 4, verse 1, we are told. He says, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. A false prophet is a false spirit. Mm -hmm. A true prophet is a true spirit. Mm -hmm. The word pro spirit is used synonymously for a prophet. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. How are we going to know the true from the false? Yes. It says the spirit means the prophet that confesseth that Jesus is the Christ is of God. I hope you have read that. The spirit means the prophet who says that Jesus is the Christ, is of God. Mm -hmm. And you find that the only non-Christian book of authority, which makes it an article of faith for his followers to believe in Jesus as the Messiah, is the Quran. Mm -hmm. The only book. This Islam is the only non-Christian faith, which makes it an article of faith for his followers to believe in Jesus. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. As you know, you are in the field that we Muslims, we are the only people <coughs> who believe that Jesus Christ was born miraculously. Many modern day Christians, including the bishops of the Anglican Church, they mock at it. So does Christ. We Muslims, we are made to believe on the authority of this book, or the authority of Muhammad, that Jesus Christ was born miraculously, without any made intervention. We are made to believe that Jesus is the Messiah. The Quran testifies about him, say, Masihu is ibn Maryama. Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, held in honor in this world and in the hereafter. Women al Muqarrabin, the company of those nearest to God, Jesus Christ. So the Quran testifies and it tells us that he performed many miracles, including those of giving life to the dead by God's permission and of healing those born blind and the lepers by God's permission. We are going together. As such, as we said, there are so many things common. We are the closest to the Christian. We are the closest to Christian. Compared, compared to the Jews mm -hmm. whom you embrace. You see, the Christian world, you are prepared, the guy who said Jesus was an illegitimate child of Mary. Mm -hmm. In the Talmud, they say a Pandera, a Roman soldier, he raped Mary, and that illicit offspring was given off as the son of God. Mm -hmm. That is in the Jewish Talmud. But that guy, you embrace him, and you love him, and you kiss him. He said Jesus was an imposter and a false prophet, the false messiah, and that's why they killed him. And you embrace him, and you fondle him. Uh, we, we, <coughs> we, we, we <coughs> I'm talking about Christian. The Christian world, you see. The Christian world, they are prepared to, re they, they think we are the greater enemy. We are telling you that we believe in Jesus as one of the mightiest messengers of God. He is the Messiah, born miraculously, gave life to the dead by God's permission. He healed those blind, uh, born blind and the lepers by God's permission. We are going together. The only parting of the way is his divinity. That's a real, that's a real problem between us. Anything else, you know, about drinking and not drinking and, you know, gambling and not gambling, we will argue and we will debate. And in the end, you'll say, well, look, I see your point of view. I see your point of view. But we, we, won't, get, we, won't, we, won't, get, we won't get emotional. No, we will not get emotional on any other topic. On most of these morals, we would be in agreement. Correct, correct. But the duty no, of Christ right, is important. Right. 
So now that is the only point of real difference. And for that, the Muslim is, is very reasonable. See, what he says is, look, if Jesus Christ, if he said, I am God, then he is God. Because my book testified that the man would never speak a lie. Jesus Christ would never speak a lie. If he said he's God, he's God. If he said worship me, I said I'm, I'm supposed to worship him. And this is the question that the Muslim is asking. Mm -hmm. Where does he say in simple language, I am God or worship me? And my, my reading of the scriptures, I have not found a single unequivocal statement in the Christian Bible where Jesus says I'm God or where he says worship me. On the contrary, he says, my father is greater than I. My father is greater than all. He said, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is righteous. Because I seek not my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Of that day, no, no man, no, not the angels, nor the son, but the father in heaven. So to us now, in every word that he utters, he's disclaiming divinity. He's claiming to be a humble servant of God. And as such, we Muslims, we say we love him, we respect him, and we revere him, and we are prepared to follow him. <coughs> Whatever he did, we are prepared to follow him. Just to appreciate uh, Shall we give somebody else oh, a chance? Shall, shall, shall we? Yes, All right, because there's so many hands going up. I just want to follow up with one question. Yes. We have so much in common there. We are monotheistic. Right. We are against communism. Right. We are against evolutionism, pornography, all these evils. Right. We're against sodomy and the gays. And Yes. Of course, we're totally against this. We have this in common. Why is it then that so many Muslim countries restrict and prevent Christian missionaries to come into them? You're a Muslim missionary and you have every right to come into South Africa and propagate Islam. But we do not have the same right to go into every Muslim country. And many Muslim countries have bulldozed down churches, have burnt Bibles, and have even imprisoned, as has happened in Egypt, many other places, even killed Christians, as is happening in Sudan now. Muslims killing Christians. This <coughs> happened in Nigeria with Muslims burning down Christian churches. How do you explain this, <laughs> if we are so close? You see, you look at the history of Islam. The Muslims went and ruled Spain for 800 years. A Christian nation. Yeah. The Muslims ruled there for 800 years. Now, if they use any of the tactics that you are describing now, they were masters of Egypt. For 1,400 years, they are the masters of Egypt, the Muslims. And there are still 15 million Egyptian Christians mm -hmm. in that country. 15 million. Do you know that? Yes, Egyptian Christians. 15 million. Christians right. So if there was this type of thing, this, the, the policy, eliminate the Christians. Force Islam down their throat. Is that if you don't accept Islam, you'll chop off your head. There would not have been a single Christian left in Spain after 800 years. Or in even any type of subtle force, economic force, educational brainwashing. Like in South Africa, the white man, he did a beautiful job. In 300 years, the bulk of the people are Christianized. They didn't use the gun. They said, now look, you Zulu, you accept the Jesus Christ, others will shoot you. No, they didn't do that. They educated them, they preached to them, and they accepted it. But now, the Muslims didn't use any type of force in Spain 800 years. Because when they were kicked out, they were kicked out to a man. And there was not one man left in that country to give the azan, the Muslim call to prayer. Why? Because they didn't use any type of force. Then the Muslims ruled India for a thousand years. One thousand years the Muslim ruled India. After a thousand years of Muslim rule, eventually when partition takes place, the Muslim gets one quarter, the Hindu gets three quarters. Why? We didn't do the job. We didn't do what you are alleging. Then which Muslim soldier went to Indonesia? The largest, supposed to be the largest Muslim numbering country in the world. Not a single Muslim soldier landed there. Then Malaysia. Not a single Muslim soldier landed there. Mozambique. 60% of Mozambique today is Muslim. Did you know that? After 500 years of Portuguese rule, 60% of Mozambique is still Muslim. And not a single Muslim soldier landed there. So there was no kind of force that was being applied. Now if you blame, some Muslim country will not give you that freedom. To us it is treason. You see, in Saudi Arabia, they said this Bible is banned. The Bible is banned. Individually you take it, they don't interfere with you. But to go and propagate the book, they will not allow it. We do because, no, 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 because, be because they say that in the Bible there are things, they are not befitting what you said about pornography that we are together. Mm. Pornography. Yeah. This book happens to be a pornography of the highest order. Not look, the highest order, there's no pictures. No, no, look, no, <laughs> pictures. <laughs> now, the word pictures are here. 
You open up Genesis chapter 19. And you read and you read about Lot and his two daughters God night after night. No, listen, God listen, records no, evil listen, things, listen, but he doesn't listen, describe no, no, it in no, 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 unseemly detail. Listen to me, my son. Lot, he committed incest with his daughters night after night, and he made them pregnant. Both of his daughters were pregnant by the father. And there's not a single word of reprimand from God Almighty to Lot. He's a prophet of God. Then, then, then still Genesis, the first book of the Bible, Genesis, chapter 35, verse 22, speaks about Reuben, mm -hmm. the eldest son of Jacob. He goes and cohibits with his father's wife, Bilhah. You remember reading that? We know this no? that, but the and, 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 no, 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 you see, now this is now, what, I say, what the moral of that? Son, father cohibiting with his, with his daughters, was the moral. Son cohibiting with his mother, was the moral. Then you read further Genesis chapter 38. It speaks about Judah, the father of the Jewish race. He went and cohibits with his daughter-in-law Tamar by the roadside, and he makes her pregnant, and she begets twins, Phares and Zara, who but become. You know who, this who, who, is not who, the message no, 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 of the Bible. No, 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 no Wholesale rape in the Bible. But, but Mr. Didat, the Quran does teach that the Torah, the first five books of yeah. Moses, are the word of God and no. it tells no. the Muslim no. to study the book. No. Let's see, no. let's see. Let's see. So yeah. how can let's I how can <laughs> let's let's see. Okay. Yeah. Sure, let someone else. Yes, ma'am. Just in answer to what you had to say yes, um, just now about another gospel, you started off saying that you, you, you even quoted out of the book of Moses and say that you imitate him by washing your feet and so on. Perfectly correct. But now why do you fail to follow the rest of the commands of the yeah. tabernacle? Yeah. And this is why I would say that it is another gospel because there's nothing, you have nothing in, in Islam that continues the tabernacle worship or the commands of God. So how can you say you please God because how can you say you are in submission to God? Right. If you do not... Right. You see Jesus there. Christ... So, no, but what I'm trying to say is on the basis of, of the Torah this is certainly another gospel. The New Testament is another gospel. No. Circumcision, circumcision, a part of the Torah. Circumcision. Romans, Romans 1 says, no? Paul says that the gospel is based on the holy prophets. <laughs> right, right. He doesn't give his basis for the gospel on the other gospels. He gives his basis for the gospel that he preaches. What did Jesus say? Yeah. No, no, what did Jesus say? He says, think not that I'm come to destroy the law of the prophets. Exactly. I am come not to destroy but to fulfill. Exactly. For verily I say unto you, yeah. heaven and earth shall pass away, mm -hmm. but one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law so till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments or shall teach men so shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. But whosoever shall teach and do shall be called great. Yes. So I am asking you, born again Christians, do you follow the laws and the commandments? Yes. 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 Are you all circumcised, you males? Some Are you circumcised? Yes, I'm circumcised in my heart. Uh, the fulfillment. No, when, when, when Jesus was circumcised. Yes, I'm circumcised. When Jesus was circumcised. With the hands of God. No, no, no the Bible the says. <coughs> your Bible says. When Jesus was circumcised, he was circumcised on the eighth day on the flesh of his foreskin. Yes. That's right. You know his foreskin? Yes. The skin in front of the male organ, yeah. that was cut off. Circum means right round and size means to cut. That was cut off, not the heart of Jesus. Yes, exactly. So, but so but what you've just no, no, said no, no, is no. Jesus fulfilled. So in other words, he's brought no, no, no. his law to fulfillment. Yes. So, so in other words, we are not just in the law. No, 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 we are now in the fulfillment no, no, no. of the law, if, and of the promises. No, no, you are not following his commandments. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, except your righteousness exceed. Yeah the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, yes. ye shall by no means enter the yes. kingdom of heaven. Yes. There is no heaven for you, unless you are better than the Jew. Yes. Now, how can you be better than the Jew by not keeping the laws and the commandments? The law says that every male child shall be circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin on the eighth day. And you as a Christian, you are talking about the heart. They are talking about the foreskin. Mm -hmm. The covenant that God entered with Abraham was the foreskin, not the heart as an outward mark of your submission but our to baptism the testament of Abraham there was promise. A big one. Our baptism now has... That doesn't circumcise the foreskin. You still carry the land there on with you, man. 
Can't you see? You still look. God Almighty gave you a commandment. He says, cut it off. This is a sign between me and you and the descendants of Abraham. And you create claim to be a spiritual children of, of Abraham. Yes. yes. Now, so as a spiritual children, you must keep his commandments. Yes. To believe in Jesus Christ, Jesus. Jesus Christ, he said, he is not of me who does not take his cross and follow me. Yes. Take up your cross and yes. follow me. Yes. Means what I do, you do. As I am circumcised, you be circumcised. Yes. As I abstain from the pig, you abstain from the pig. Everything that I do, you do. You follow me. When you say you follow him, means you do everything that he does. Now, we Muslims are the nearest to following Jesus. Whatever he does, we say we are prepared to do. What did he do? What did he say? What we must do? We are prepared to do. You, with your lips, you say you are following him, but in your actions, you are belying that. But Mr. Did we appreciate what you are saying. Yes, yes, my son. In the Bible, and in history, there's been no one that has been born without male um, interference, you could say. And Jesus Christ was born without any male interference. And you agree with that? Yes, yes. The Quran right. testifies yeah. to that. Now, I'd like to ask you, why, for what reason do you think Jesus was born without male interference? And that he led a whole sinful life? For what reason? I, I mean, sinless, sorry. You know, what reason? Why Jesus specifically? You know, did he not do something special? Was it not a special... Um, birth and a special life for a special reason, a specific reason at the end of his life. Why did he have to live a sinless life right through until his death? You see, we Muslims believe that all the prophets are sinless. That's our article of faith. So as such, we will not try to look for faults in Jesus. Yeah. Whatever we read, he says, no, 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 I can't accept it. I can't accept it. But I will not ex we will not attribute any faults to Jesus. With regards to his miraculous birth, the Muslims you know, a thousand million Muslims of the world, we believe in his miraculous birth. Now, does that make him into a superior being? Miraculous birth, being born without a father. Yeah. Does that make him unique? Yes. Yeah. Now, if he is unique and he deserves our worship because he's got no father, then there is another man in your holy book, in the Bible, who's got no father and no mother. So a person who's got no father, if he becomes a God and the son of God, then the one who got no father and no mother is greater than Jesus. You should be worshipping him. Adam had no father and no mother. And God created him. Right. So God created Jesus without a father. Why Adam shouldn't sinned. you not worship Adam? Adam sinned. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You see, Christ. All right, all right. Then what about Melchizedek, the high priest of Salem, book of Hebrews? We believe he was uh, Christophany. Uh, yeah. Christ That's appeared. True. Kind of. Look. He says, this man, Melchizedek, is the high priest of Salem. Mm -hmm. right. Salem. <coughs> listen, 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 listen. Salem means Salam, Jerusalem. Yes, Jerusalem. 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 High priest of Salem. And Abraham, he went and paid him tithes. He was a historical person. Right. And he is described in the book of Hebrews without father, without mother, without beginning, without end. God himself. That means these are the qualities of God that Melchizedek has. He deserves to be worshipped more than Jesus. Jesus had a beginning in the stable and he had an apparent end. He had a beginning and he had an end. He had a mother. She carried him for nine months. And when he was born, she had to be purified after seven days according to the Jewish law. That means the birth of Jesus made her, his mother impure for seven days. But Melchizedek, he didn't make his mother impure. He didn't make his mother impure. He was not born. He had no father, no mother, no beginning, no end. And these are the qualities, as you just said now, are the qualities of God. So he's got godly qualities. As such, we should be worshipping Melchizedek and not Jesus, not Muhammad. Jesus says in, in John that he, he and the Father are one. one. Uh, shall we give another yeah. chance? Other, no, other, 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 please, other. please answer it. Right. Jesus said, I and my father are one. This is John chapter 10, verse 30. You know, I have been asking Christian, learned men, what is the context? What is. No, no, please, please don't open the book. Please, 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 just for a second. Keep your Bible closed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Christian is ever ready to throw 
Jesus said, I am a father of one. So this, he did say that. Mm. So I'm asking learned men of Christianity, including your bishops, what is the context? And the guy looks at me, you know, if he doesn't understand the meaning of the word context. Mm. I said, you know, what you quoted is the text. Yes, that's right. No, no, I'm explaining to the Englishman, that English bishop. I said, what you quoted is the text. John chapter 10, verse 30. I want the context, I mean the text that goes with it, before or after. And the guy is staring at me. I said, well, what's wrong? Don't you know the context? He said, do you know the context? I said, of course I know. But now, you are all missionaries. <coughs> I want you to give me the context. Context of what you quoted is John chapter 10, verse 30. I am my father, I want. I said, What is the context? Jesus starts by speaking about right. Right. the good shepherd, that he is the good shepherd, that he is willing to lay down his life for the sheep, that no one takes his life from him. He lays it down freely. He is the good shepherd. He also says, Everyone who enters by the door um, shall be saved. But those who don't want to enter by the door, they're all thieves and lies. That Satan comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus comes to give life. Context. That's the context. No, 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 no. no. Context. The context is, is that sort of way on the Sabbath, uh, the Jews were trying to persecute him on the Sabbath. And, um, and they, when he said, uh, when he said, I am the other one. So what? Okay. And he said, I do nothing except that which I see the Father shows me. And he, and he claimed to be one with God. And the Jews no, wanted, no, the Jews no, wanted no, to no, 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 no. What's the context? I'm, I'm coming, I'm going to ask you a question here. No, no, please. I want the context first before you answer you another question. Now, I've got, I've, got, I've got a question here which I've been wanting to ask you. No, no, before. I will give you that opportunity. <laughs> but answer my question. I said, what is the context? And I'm telling you, none of you know the context. <laughs> so then I'm telling you, I'm challenging you, yes, okay. none of you know the context. So why did the Jews want to stone him for blasphemy if he claimed to be God? They must have I, I said the, con say the context. Yes, that's right. what So now, let, let my sons and daughters, let me give it to you. I said, this was John chapter 10, verse 30. We start from verse 23. Now you can open the book. You can start from verse 23 of chap John chapter 10. It says there, and Jesus walked in Solomon's porch in the temple of Jerusalem. Then came the Jews round about him. Meaning, they surrounded him and said, yeah, open it, open it, John chapter 10, verse 23. 23. Yeah. Got it? 23. No, 23. Yeah. 10, 23. And Jesus walked in Solomon's porch in the temple of Jerusalem. Then came the Jews round about him. He is alone. Now they surrounded him. And brandishing a finger in his face, they said, how long does that make us to doubt? If that be the Christ, tell us plainly. In other words, they are alleging that he is talking ambiguously. He is not putting forth his claim clear enough. So Jesus says, I told you, and you believe not. So I told you, and he says, I says, my sheep, hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. My Father, my Father which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Verse 29, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Verse 30, I and my Father are one. In the context, that once the person has accepted faith, God sees to it that the man remains in faith, and I as a teacher, I see to it that they are not being misled, they remain in faith, I and my father are one in this, to see that the man remains in faith. But the Jews were looking for trouble. They wanted to give him a bashing. They didn't like his preaching, his condemnation of them. You hypocrites, you generation of wipers, you whited sepulchres, you wicked and adulterous generation. Look, nobody likes to hear words like this. So they were looking for an opportunity and they got it. They got the man alone. So now they want to pick up a fight. So when he said, I and my father are one, they picked up stones again, again to stone him. So Jesus says, many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do you stone me? So they say, for the good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, because that thou being a man makest us a God. That's the second charge. 
The first charge was that he was talking ambiguously. First charge, true or false? False. He had put forth this claim that I am the Messiah. But they didn't accept it. His sheep, his followers, they accepted him. And as such, God will give them eternal life. But now when he said, I and my father are one, they took that for blasphemy and they picked up stone against to stone him. So Jesus says, many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do you stone me? So they say, for a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, because thou being a man makers thyself a God. Now, is that, did he claim that? What does he say to that? They are saying that, look, because you are a man, you're making yourself a God, that's blasphemy. It is blasphemy. But if he is God, that's not blasphemy. So now, what does he say to that? If he said, look, man, if I am God, what else do you expect me to say? If I am the Messiah, and I tell you, I, you ask me, are you the Messiah? I said, well, look, that's what people think. I don't know, I'm just, by the way, I'm just, I'm no Messiah. So, the thing is, if I claim, I say, I'm the president of the IPC. So are you the president? I said, yes, I am. Why, why, should I pre why should I prevaricate if I am? If I, what misquote? Yeah, in 33 it says, yeah, they themselves say, you yourself have declared yourself to be God. Verse 33. Yes, yes. Make us thyself a God. That no, is, no, you yourself have declared yourself to be God. So Jesus has... What, 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 what version is that of the Bible? This is the living version. Right. You see, the living Bible, you have put your own words, you have been paraphrasing. Here is the King James Version. I'm quoting you from the King James Version. You don't accept this? We do. We accept I just, I just quoted you. The original manuscript. I just quoted you from the King James Version. They say that you are a man and you are making yourself a God. So what does Jesus say to that? He says, is it not written in your law? Is it not written in your law? Meaning in the Torah. Law, Hebrew word for law is Torah. Yeah. Is it not written in your law? He's sarcastic. Because he also believes in the law. But he says, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. I said, he's quoting from the 82nd Psalm. Where God declares to David. Says, in the book of Psalms, he says, behold, ye are gods. And all of you are the children of the Most High. This is the language of the Jew. In the language of the Jew, Moses is described in the book of Exodus as a God. Because God tells to Moses, says, Behold, I will make you a God to Pharaoh. And Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. And yet no Jew calls Moses a God. No Jew ever calls Moses a God. This is the language of the Jew. The representative God is also described as a God. Moses is God. But you give him a small g. You give Moses a small g. See, in your Bible, there is no such thing as a small g and a capital G in Hebrew or Greek. Hmm? But now, in your convenience, you give him a small g. Moses is a small g, God. So, but Jesus is saying, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are God. If he, God Almighty, called them gods unto whom the word of God came in. The prophets are called gods in our language, man. This is our language. We speak like that. Like in English, you go to the high court and you stand before the judge and you say, me Lord, yeah. me Lord. Yeah. Lord means God. But now you don't mean that. You, you would mean... Just turn you if you were called, if, if it was, if what it is what you are saying, surely they understood him to be calling himself God. But now he's not. No, that, the excuse, if you're looking for trouble, there's a saying that if you look for trouble, you find it around the corner. You don't have to go very far. They're looking for trouble. They want to pick up a fight with this man. They want to bash him. There are so many there and this man is alone. So it's, it's, they're working themselves into a frenzy. So Jesus Christ he said, look, this is written in our law. We talk like that. Say ye of him whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world that thou blasphemest. Because I said I'm the son of God. He didn't say, yes, I'm God. He said, look, I'm claiming to be a son of God in the language that we understand. So in other words, he, in the context, what you understand that he and Father One is not the same nature, same power, same knowledge, omniscience. No. So yes, my yeah. uh, that, that gentleman, yes, you, I'm uh, sorry. Mr. You, you had like for a long time. Ask here in our scripture in Revelation. Yes. We have it here towards the end in chapter 22, verse 13. Christ clearly states that he is the Alpha, the beginning and the, uh, the Omega, the beginning and the end. It is actually written, taken from Greek, that he actually says this here, that he is, the, that he is, that he is gone. Now, well, we have it now, here, and now. he says, could I just finish? Uh -huh. Let me just finish, please. It says here, in these scriptures, 
And for every, I testify for every man that heareth the word of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add to these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in the book. And I'll take it on 19. Then. And if any man shall take away from the words of this book, this prophecy, God shall take away his part in the book of life. This book of Revelation? Yes. When was it written, sir? About 79 AD. Right. When was John written? This was this was a divine. No, the book of John, the book of John, when was it written? Probably, yeah. probably between 65 and 75. And which was written 100 years after, 99 years later. Yeah, John was written probably a bit before. So, you see, this book of Revelation this is, a is, not talk, is not talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, uh, uh, Philippians, Corinthians. Can, I, can I just say something before I carry on? I must. This, this is a divine revelation which God gave. God gave us. This is in the book of, uh, uh, in our Bible. And this is Christ telling us quite plainly that He is God Himself. That they are you all see, one. This is a in dream. Is a book of Revelation is a dream. You have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, canonical gospels. Yeah. While Jesus walked this earth, He was with the disciples for three years, yeah. preaching to them, talking to them, talking to the public. At a single state, a single second in that life of His, did he ever say to anybody, I am God? Did he say to anybody, worship me? Did he? Yes. Where is yeah. Where is yeah. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, show me one verse. Yes. What yes, about when Thomas I, I, worshipped I, I, I've him? I've had my hand up for a John very 20. long time. Well, look, everybody's hands up. I'm not <laughs> trying to I discriminate. I want to answer your question. Um, I want to ask you a question. Yes, please. You see, you, you mentioned John in the book of John. Later, look, his disciples didn't believe, even at the Last Supper, that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. So Philip, one of the disciples, said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. And Jesus answered, he said, haven't you not known, Philip, me? That if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Yeah. Because the Father is in me and my life is a revelation of God's message to you. Right, yes. So what's the point, my son? What's the point? Well, yes. the point is that... That he is the Father. No, that, that, that no, is Jesus the Father? No, 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 no. Wait. He said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Is he the Father? Yes, because if... if is he the Father who, 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 who begot, begot himself? Is the Son. No, no. He said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So, if that is what it means, it means he is the Father. You are looking for the president, you are looking for the president, I said, look, if you have seen me, you have seen the president. In other words, I am the president, am I right? I am the president of the IPC. But you see, God is an invisible, we can't see God. But he's, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So in other words now, it has to be explained, that verse. Now that verse, again in this context, John 14, sit down my side, John 14. You see, Jesus is telling them, he said, look, I, I am going to prepare a place for you. In my father's house, there are many mentioned. Please put your hands down while I'm talking. It's disrespectful. Because now you're distracting me, you know. Everybody is pulled up. That, no, my son, I said, put your, keep your hands down until I'm finished. This disrespectful. You know, everybody puts their hands up. That, that, wait, man, listen to me. Listen, this is not fair. You ask me a question, I'm trying to answer that. I said, in its context, John 14. Jesus is telling his disciples, I'm going to prepare a place for you. In my father's house, there are many mentions. If it was not so, I would have told you. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. You know where I'm going, and you know how to get there. The disciples misunderstood. They say, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? See, Jesus Christ is talking about spiritual matters, and they are understanding it like geographical locations. Going to where Johannesburg, Bloemfontein, Nelspray, no, no. He's not talking about that. Nazareth, Galilee, Jerusalem. No, no, he's not talking about that. He's talking about the way to God, spiritual matters. But they misunderstood. They said, we do not know where you are going and how can we know the way? So in answer to that, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. This was too heavy for them. This was too heavy for them. See, this was like talking high metaphysics. So they say, they say, so look, just show us the Father and it suffice at us. Thomas, Thomas says. Just show us God and it will be sufficient for me. 
So in answer to that, he says, ah, Philip. He says, Philip, you have been with me for so long. In other words, look, you ought to know. You are a born Jew. You know, according <coughs> to us, us Jews, no man can see God at any time. God is not seen at any time. No man can see God and live. And you as a Jew, how can you make such a silly request? You want to see God with your physical eyes. Philip, you have been with me for so long. Why ask us thou? Show us the Father. You should know better than that, you Jew. According to our religion, God is not seen. He's not a physical being that you can see with your naked eyes, with your physical eyes. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. It means if you understood me, you would have understood what God is. You wouldn't make such a silly request. He is not claiming to be the Father. He is not claiming to be God. He is just telling him that if you have understood me, and this word see, in the Bible, the same John says, seeing they see not, hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. Blind leaders of the blind. This is the problem. The problem is that you are misinterpreting the words of Jesus. Yes, my son. Yes, we just trying to look at uh, the deity of Christ. And when you look at uh, you know, uh, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, these three are one. Even in the first book of uh, John chapter, chapter 5 and verse 7, it talks about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. Now, when you first epistle of John, chapter, chapter five, five verse seven. Right. Now, when you look at uh, the book of Genesis, there. Um, in the book Hebrew, of which, which, which book? Genesis. Oh, Genesis. Genesis chapter one. Chapter one. You see there, uh, where it says, "In the beginning, God," and you come down to verse twenty-six. It's also talking about um, mm -hmm. God said, "Let us." And when you were talking about us. You know, it's a word that implies to two or three people, right? So we believe that, um, you know... It can also mean million. Yeah, it can mean million. Okay. But we are trying to look at, even from the Hebrew kind of understanding, or rather a Hebrew context, it's Elohim, Elohim. Now, it talks about the creation. You know, Jesus, okay, God the Father, the Son of the Holy Spirit, now, when we try to look at, uh, when God says, let us in the creation, we see that Jesus was there in the very beginning. And this also goes with the um, uh, the book of uh, John chapter 1. I thank God for, you know, the words that you have said from the very beginning, that you agree with the all uh, the Old Testament books. And mm -hmm. I, never say, I never uttered any such words. I don't know where you thumbs up in your phone. I, I never said anything like that at all. You uh, accepted right. Moses? Uh, yes, I accept Moses and Jesus, all the prophets. I accept all right. them. All right. But I didn't say the books that go in their name, I accept them in total. All right. Yeah. Thanks very much. Yes. But you said you agree with our, the four Gospels. No, no. I didn't say that either. I said, look, there are so many things that Jesus said, I agree with. Everything that Jesus said, I agree with. Everything that Jesus says, you see, you have the red letter Bible. You know the red letter Bible? Yeah. Yes. yes. Every word of Jesus is in red letter. What are you supposed to have uttered? They are in red letters in the Bible. 90% of the New Testament is black. Black like you and me. You know that? 90% is black. So in other words, 90% Jesus didn't utter a single word, 90%. Oh, your okay. question, your question. Yeah, your question. Let, let me just finish. All now. right. All right. We, we, we believe that the scriptures interpret other scriptures. And so even though it's the gospel says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the word was made money first and dwelt among us. We believe that Jesus is God. And he was there right. in the beginning. Right, right, right. You see, Even in the creation. Right, right. You haven't, no, nobody has still answered my question, my request. I said, where does Jesus say, I am God? Where does he say, worship me? This is now, you using the words of John, that John yes. said such and such a thing, and you're giving an interpretation that this means that Jesus is God. Jesus didn't say, I am God. He didn't say, worship me. Now, coming to, coming to your quotation, about the Holy Trinity. You quoted me from the authorized King James Version of the Bible. And the Douay Roman Catholic Version. 
it has that verse. That verse. First chapter of John, chapter 5, verse 7, where it says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. It's there. In your King James Version, it's there. And in the Roman Catholic Version, it's there. But in all the modern translations, including the Revised Standard Version, it's thrown out as a fabrication. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Do you know that? Yes, I know. And yet you are quoting now 32 scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 cooperating denominations, maybe including yours. They, were, they went out to produce the RSV, the most up-to-date Bible today available. Going back to the most ancient authorities most ancient manuscripts. This one here goes to the ancient authorities, ancient manuscripts. The Roman Catholic goes to the ancient authorities. The RSV goes to the most ancient. That's dating about 300 years after Jesus, three to four. This is about four to 600 years after Jesus. So in the most ancient authority, that verse is not to be found. It's a fabrication. Even in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Even in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Mm -hmm. This verse does not exist. Well, we don't, no, many other <laughs> even the Dead Sea Scroll is no gospel to you. So what I showed you from the Dead Sea Scroll, I said, look, this prophet of righteousness in the Dead Sea Scroll is Jesus. You say, no, I don't accept that. Because the Dead Sea Scroll is not your book of authority. Your book of authority is your Bible, and I'm quoting you, your Bible and your Bible authorities who have thrown out that verse as a fabrication. So your religion is based on a fabrication. You're thumb-sucking something that is not supposed to be there. No more. No more. Let me just finish it up. No, 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 no. You asked it. Let me ask. I'm answering your. I'm answering your question. You see, you you gave a lengthy explanation. So now you quoted from the book of Genesis. You see, you took from here to went to the book of Genesis. But if we have about and in the book of Genesis, that first verse of the Bible, what is this? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Right? Now that first verse is a mistranslation in every Bible on earth. No, 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 no. Listen to me. I'm not dogmatic. I'm now telling you that you said just now that that word is Elohim. In the beginning God, the Hebrew word for God is Elohim. Im is a plural in Hebrew. Now open your Bible, it says in the beginning God. The Hebrew is God's. The Hebrew is God's. That's Elohim. Yes, Elohim. It is plural but it is a singular, one God. So look, you have no right. When the word the man uttered, if God dictated it to Moses, he said Elohim and Im means gods, you have to translate it as gods. You have a right to make a note to say, look, you see, in the Hebrew language, this word Elohim does not mean more than one God. It means what and what not. You have a right to an explanation, a commentary. But the, but, the but declaration you, you, of faith the Israelis was the Lord Elohim, he is one. I mean, this is in the no, 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 in the, no, 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 I'm quoting the word, the words, yeah. in the beginning, God yeah. created the heavens and the earth. Yeah. The that's, that's Elohim. A, Elohim. Yeah. Now, Elohim means God's, means one God. uh, right, if it means one God, then there's no Trinity. No, but we only believe in one God. This is what you say with your mouth, but in your head you got three. No, you see, no. you said you believe in the Holy Trinity. Yes. Do you believe in the Holy the Trinity? Word, Trinity yes. is not in the Bible, but we do read of but you do believe one God the revealed Spirit. Father, Son, and So you Spirit. believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. One God. That's all right. But you say in you say in your catechism, yeah. you say in your catechism, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Yes, but it's you one say thing. you say in your catechism, yeah. mm -hmm. the Father is Almighty, the Son is Almighty. And the Holy Ghost is Almighty, mm. but they are not three Almighties, but one Almighty. Mm. True. It continues. So what does Yah uh, Yahweh Echad? <laughs> <laughs> the Father is Almighty, the Son is Almighty, and the Holy Ghost is Almighty. Yes. But they are not three Almighties, but one Almighty. Yes. It continues. Mm. The Father is a person, the Son is a person, mm. and the Holy Ghost is a person. But they are not three persons, but one person. Yes. Now this is what you are uttering in your language. Mm -hmm. Sounds like English. Yes. 
It is English. It sounds English. It sounds like. But but I, I can be a father. I can be a son at the same time. I can be a husband. No no no. You said person, person, person. But they are not three persons, but one person. Yeah, but the body is soul, spirit. You said person, person, person. In your catechism, man, the Roman Catholics, the Anglicans, the Presbyterians, the Lutherans. So you say, you say, you say. I've been waiting a long time for asking but, my question. But I'm answering that man there, and yeah. you, are, you are not fair to him, <laughs> and now are you fair to me? I, I've, I've had my hand up, like, <laughs> no, I was no, late, no, and then he no, put his hand up. No. I was asking one question. You, 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 sh yeah. you, should, you should have patience, my son. Yeah. You, see, you ask a question, he asked a question, and I'm trying to answer him. Yeah. And now you are getting impatient. Show a little patience, a little patience. <laughs> So the first word, Elohim, is mistranslated in every Bible on earth. In the Hebrew language is Elohim, and Im is a plural word, that which you all agree, we agree. But you see in the Hebrew language, like in the Arabic language, there are two types of plurals. In the Arabic and Hebrew, there are two types of plurals. Ask the Jew. Ask the Jew now this Elohim, how many gods are there? He says, one. Is he a triune God? He says, no. Is he one with Moses? He says, no. He is Ahad, Ahad. Yeah. He is the one and only. <laughs> right. He is not three in one. He is not two in one. He is not millions in one. He is one by himself, alone. That's the human. But what is his Elohim? In the Quran also is the same. See, the Quran says, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun. That it is for us to send down the revelation and it is for us to protect it. So you ask the Muslim, who is this us? Father, Son and Holy Ghost? Is your Muhammad, Jibreel and uh, God? He says, no. Then who is this us? You have a right to ask. No Arab Christian asks the Muslims because they know in their language there are two types of plurals. So in English you haven't got that. In Arabic and Hebrew we have two sets of two types of plurals. There is one who is a plural of respect and there is one plural of numbers. Mm -hmm. So the Jew will tell you that this is a plural of respect in his language. Therefore he can translate as God because it is a plural of respect. It is still God. But if you are translating you have to translate as God because at the back of your mind your father, son and the Holy Ghost. That this Im, Elohim, means Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So you have to say, in the beginning, God's created the heavens and the earth. But the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, that these three put together, they said, let us create man. Who is this us? You ask the question. Who is this us? Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? Yes. Why not Moses with him? Why not the millions and millions of angels with him? Moses was was the, the, angel was was the angels were there. Could you deal with the, 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 the angels were there. Millions of them no, were there. The beginning why, was only God. why did he not use the angels right. also? Because there were the angels. No, the angels. Right. Angels. God created. You see? The, the angels. So now, the thing is this now, you are using one, one set of rules for language. Your own rule to justify something. Now you ask the Jew, he said, look, we have got plural of respect in our language. The Arab says, we have got plural of respect in our language. Now you can't take that out and he said, look, also in the Quran you have plurality of gods. There isn't. You tell the Jew there is also in your book and you can't seem to understand your own book. You don't know your Hebrew. What about Echad? That's compound one. No, Echad means one. No, compound one. No. Yes, I can prove it. So Shama Israel Adonai Elohim Adonai Echad. Compound one. You say you know you know languages, Mr. Didan. No, no, I didn't say that. I didn't say no? that. I no. only, yes, my son. Yeah, I, yes, no. yes, one is one. Also, 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 and then you have said I'm more, more Christian, Christian than the Christian. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Then I would like to ask you the way you understand Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. You can give us a little explanation. What does it say? For unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. It shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father. Yes, now he's, he's given it. 
He's given it already. And he shall be called. You said just now. Yes. Almighty God. No. Wonderful Counselor. Right. Mighty God. Yes, yes. Mighty God. Almighty God. He shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Mm -hmm. Right. He shall be called Almighty God. Mm -hmm. Right. Prince and of peace. Prince of peace. Right. So now he shall be called. Mm -hmm. Did anybody call him at any time? While he walked this earth for 33 years, Almighty God. No, but we've sung it for the last 2,000 years in all of mm. our churches. <laughs> then he said, He shall be called. We are calling him Thomas. Thomas. No, no. Thomas. He shall be called, that means in your scriptures, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and the 27 books of the New Testament. Did anybody call him Almighty God? Thomas. Well, yes. yes, because yes. Thomas, and uh, Tom, Tom, Thomas, 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 John 20. Yeah. 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 John 20, you worshipped him as Yahweh. Does it say that worship as Yahweh? Where? Uh, Does it say that? The word is kurios, which is, is used in the Septuagint, is the same word as Lord, which is they used for Yahweh. But this word Lord is used for Abraham as well. Uh, that Tom? word in the Septuagint, kurios, is used for Yahweh. May I read it? In fact, I have it here, John 20. Jesus came and stood among them, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here in my side, reach out your hand and put it in my side, stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Amen. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have believed. Jesus did not rebuke him. Yes. As Paul right, rebuked right, people right. when I tried no, to no, no, you. He just chided him for not yeah. believing earlier. Right. Uh, what is your name, by the way, my son? Peter Hammond. Peter Hammond. Peter. Now, when you leave this place, you go to this special branch, for example. And you tell them, he says, you know this Didak fellow, right in the center of the town, he's running a communist den. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right? We so, don't believe that, of course. No, let's say you go and did such a, such a dastardly thing. For what I'm trying to do, I'm really trying to share with you uh, my thoughts, you see, and my hospitality, whatever it is there. But now you go along and report us. So these guys are, you know, there's a communist conspiracy going on from here, and they're going to upset the government, and all that kind of thing. It seems to be a deviation from the point. No, no, I'm coming to the point. I see. So they come along, they search my officers and go through, say, what? what's wrong with you? I mean, so many years we are doing this job, you know, you never did this before. So you had these guys from, uh, from North Coast. I said, yeah, 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 yeah. He said, there was that Peter Hammond, you know, the leader of the group. I said, yeah. He said, he came and told us, man. I said, yes. Now, next time you come along with a big, broad, smiling face with a Cheshire cat smile, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. D. Rad. I said, Peter, my God. What a damn thing, you know, you did. You know? Uh, Peter, my God. Uh, Peter, uh, my God. Uh, you know, what a bloody hypocrite you are showing me such nice, smiling, broad uh, face. Uh, and you. Uh, uh, and you uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like that. So, 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 Lazarus, Lazarus, you see, the, the first meeting, the first time that Jesus comes to that upper room, Lazarus was not there. The first meeting, the first time he came, he wasn't Thomas. there. Thomas. Thomas wasn't there. I'm sorry. Thomas wasn't there. So, after Jesus has departed, the other disciples must have met Thomas and said, man, the master was here with us. He was here with us. And you know, he had boiled fish and honeycomb with us. He's the same Jesus, man. We felt him. Because he said, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Say, so handle me and see, for the spirit has no flesh and bones, mm -hmm. as you see me have. Mm -hmm. And we felt him, and we believed not for joy, and wondered, man, what happened? And he said, have you here any meat, something to eat? Mm -hmm. And we gave him a piece of, piece of broiled fish and a honeycomb, and he took it, and he ate. Thomas says, no, 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 I can't believe all these fairy tales. Mm -hmm. See, except I put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side to feel the wound. Mm -hmm. I will not believe. Mm -hmm. What will you not believe? That, that is the same Jesus. The yeah. Yeah. If they had told him we saw on the scene a ghost of Jesus, he would have believed. Mm -hmm. But they said, no, it's not a ghost, man, it's the same Jesus. You know, flesh and blood, eating boiled fish and honeycomb. So to verify that, they said, I must do this put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into the side and otherwise I will not be there. Eight days later, eight days after this, in the meantime, the other disciple must have just met Jesus, you know, your friend Thomas, that guy, he wants to do this and he wants to do that to verify. So eight days later, Jesus comes in 
again in the upper room and he finds Thomas and says, Thomas, come on, come on, come on, put your finger and see, put your hand into my side and don't be faithless. The guy says, what a bloody fool I was, man. All the ten disciples are testifying that he was here. He is alive, he ate broiled fish and honeycomb, and I said, I must do this, and I must do that. I said, my God, my Lord, what, what a dis yeah. disgust. Yeah. That, mm. this, we we, we hear what you're saying, but... Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, could, could, could I just ask, um, I feel we may have got off our point. We, of course, came here today to hear about Islam. Oh. And what we're hearing about <laughs> no, no. Christianity. You, my brothers and sisters, but, but you gave me no chance. Yeah. I'm sorry. But, <laughs> believe, but do you recall... <laughs> you, know, you didn't thing. even give me a chance for a glass of water. <laughs> but, but, Mr. <laughs> Dad, we do want to hear more about Islam. No. And we did ask questions such as um, the issue of persecution of Christians by Muslims. We did ask... I think the most important issue we asked, uh, if I could have confirmation, was that how are we to know that the revelation given to Muhammad was not one of those revelations we are warned about as being from false prophets, angels, uh, Satan in the guise of an angel of light? How are we to know what confirmation, how are we to know that the revelation of the Quran is fully consistent with the revelation given through Jesus and Moses, consistent with the Bible, and that this is something that we can believe? In? We say consistent with God's word. Yes. Whatever God had inspired through the prophets, yes. that this is a continuation of that. This is what we're interested in. Of that. So, I, if yeah. you don't mind, is this yeah. right? We should go back to this. Yes. Yes. I think this is what we're interested in. You see, <laughs> we Muslims say that Muhammad is the fulfillment of the teachings of Moses and Jesus. It's the same religion. To me, what do you call Judaism and what you call Christianity and what we call Islam, we say that these are not three different religions. Mm -hmm. We say it is the same religion on different levels. It is the one religion on different levels. Like the teaching given through Moses. In the Sinai Desert, they had just come out of the Egyptian bondage and God wanted to give them a law. A law that would give them quick justice. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. There was no time for lengthy litigations or putting a man in prison. An antisocial character, an adulterer, turn him to death. Get rid of the guy mm -hmm. and move on. There's work to be done. There's no sense in leaving the man in the desert to die of hunger and thirst. It was more merciful to kill him and he will also become an objectless and fathers. Mm -hmm. So that was the philosophy behind the law that was given to Moses. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Beautiful law. A Jesus or a Muhammad could not have done anything better in the desert for the Jews. If instead of the word Moses, Jesus was there, he would have given the same law. Instead of Jesus or Moses, Muhammad was there. He would have given the same law. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. No difference. The law was not summed up in those words. It was, thou shalt have no other gods before no, no, you, no, not no, to no, make no, idols. All, 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 all except, all except, except. all except, mm -hmm. all except. But I said, if Jesus or Muhammad couldn't have done anything better. It was God's law. Was for the needs of the people of the time. We think this was, time. This was perfect. This was a perfect teaching for the needs. Mm -hmm. But laws have a tendency to change the characters of people over a period of time. Like we are living in this color conscious country. Or Hitlerite Germany. You know, one of the most cultured nations in Europe. Mm. They incinerated six million Jews. So it is said. Six million Jews. As a kind of nation like that, the land of Goethe and Beethoven, and this cultured nation among the Europeans do such a thing like that? Impossible. I says, no, through brainwashing it's possible. Mm. You know, you brainwash a nation over a period, say, these are parasites, these are Jews, these are Christ killers. Mm. Shh. The people are workers, and well, even if you feel it's wrong, we say, well, they deserve it, man. You mean mm. like Saddam Hussein and the Kurds right, and the Shias? Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. Same, same. You can be programmed. In South Africa, for 300 years, we had apartheid, mm. racism. Mm -hmm. Not in the tell we didn't. Mm -hmm. Not in the tell we didn't. How? Oh, I said, look, I, I suffered it here. For 60 years, I'm suffering this apartheid of yours. I don't think but you've suffered so badly. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's not for you to judge. You have no right to say how I feel. You know, that's one little pinprick how I felt. You have no right to judge. You have no right. But to but say, what do you, no, no, let's. So I've been in prison, have you? I mean, what? I've spent time in prison, have you? But I said, you have no right to judge how I feel. Yes. So, this color conscious country of ours, I have had occasion of inviting 
dozens of whites, learned people, businessmen to my home for chat and food. Whatever I have, I offer. And they all enjoy my food. My food. Our, our food is the Muslim God we cook. But the white man enjoys it, the colored enjoys it, the African enjoys it, everybody hogs it. They love our food. See? And they, they, they're profuse in their thanks. When they go, they enjoy the chat and they enjoy the food. But no white man has ever invited me to his home in 40 years for a cup of tea. Yet, no white man has. But they meet me in the street subsequently and they say, oh, Mr. D. Dad, how are you? How's the missus? She says, fine. Call me my regards to her. All that they do. But no white man has invited me to his house for a cup of tea. Is this something to do with race or something to do no, with religion? That, that's what I explain. Is this religion or is no, it no, race? No, race? Race. I doubt it. No, no, let, let me give you my experience. And if you want to say, look, you're a liar, so okay. You have a right to say that. So I said, no white man has. So I want to know why. So I meet. Talk to you like friend to friend. I said, look, don't you people know such a thing as reciprocation? I said, yes. Don't you reciprocate among yourselves? I said, yes. Then how is it that you don't reciprocate to me? Uh, you know, maybe you never thought of it. No. What happens is this. That the white man, he is programmed. In this color conscious country, everything is color, color, color. So now he invites me to Durban North, his elite home in Durban North. And I go there one Sunday morning with my family. And my wife, of course, she wears our own attire, and I have got this funny headgear and this beard of mine. I go along, uh, walking down the streets, looking for number 10 Downing Street, and I found it. And there are people watering in the garden. They say, what this bloody coolie doing around here? You know, in this elite Durban North area. They the back and say, what this bloody coolie doing around here? Huh? With this gang of, you know, uh, this oriental woman. Right, I go knock at the door, and Mrs. Smith, she opens the door with a smiling face. She opens the door, and she welcomes me in. Right. But now, tongues begin to wag. He said, look, half an hour, 15 minutes gone, and these coolies have gone into the house. What are they doing? What are these Mrs. Uh, the Smith people? What are they running? Has she been or what? So at the back of the mind, the white man is terrified about his environment. But, but no, Mr. Dear, no, so are you not an unusual individual? You have a so particular you should, you mission in life, no, no, which in that, may in that mean case, that you have when you, if, you, if you are a hypocrite, you yeah. enjoyed my food, you say. Hmm? You enjoyed my food and you enjoyed my chat. You are a hypocrite. Well, and yet you are not prepared to call me to your house for a cup of tea. And when we are around the corner. Mr. what is this going to do with What I was telling you about now, or what I was demonstrating, yeah. about brainwashing. You see, people get brainwashed. All gets brainwashed. We all get brainwashed. The type of society you live in, everybody is color conscious. The African, when I call him Umfeitu, he's terrified. Because he's terrified. Umfeitu means brother. He is terrified. The Zulu is terrified. And I said, Umfeitu, brother. Because he's thinking, everybody says, Kafa, Kafa, Kafa. And this guy's calling me a brother. What's the motive? You know, he wants something out of me. He's terrified. So, why? Because of this setup. Everything is on color, color, color. So the guy is thinking in terms of color. So between Moses and Jesus, 1300 years, the Jews had a law, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. And they kept that for the law. In the context of the magistrate, it was the, the law was Please. Not, not Please. 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 They, they, 1300 years, they kept the law, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Now, during these 1300 years, the character of people changes. I for a man, a tooth for a tooth. So I was trying to chase the birds with that old-fashioned sling, the one that David used, and by accident it damaged your eye. So you go to the judge, he says, look, this guy here did that damage my eye. We want to damage his. We want to damage his. So I plead with you, I says, Peter, look, I didn't mean it, man. I was trying to chase the birds from the field, and it was an accident. Forgive me. He said, no, the law says an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. I said, look, Peter, I'll give you a heifer from my flock. You know, please forgive me. He said, no, the law says an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. The you have a right. To you, that is you, not the law. The magistrates were to extract. You've made provision for accidents. Look, you have a right to demand your pound of flesh, yeah. like Shylock. You have a right. So now Jesus Christ, he sees this abuse among the Jews that they had forgotten forgiveness. So Jesus Christ, a spiritual physician among the Jews, he wants to rectify that. 
So he's telling them, you must forgive, and forgive, and forgive. He says, how many times, Lord? He says, 70 times 7. Did he say that? 70 times 7. That's 490. Is that to be taken literally? No. No. In other words, indefinitely. You see, because now you've got a sickness. Your sickness, hard-heartedness is such that you need a remedy which is an antidote, which is another extreme. 70 times 7. You don't start counting and say, look, Peter, this is the fifth time now. Huh? This is the fiftieth time now, you know. Peter, now look, this is 600 times now. Peter, until he reaches 500. Is, uh, is, is right. forgiveness so, taught in Islam to forgive your enemies? Is it? So, yes. So now, Jesus says, forgive 70 times 7. This is an antidote for the sickness. So he has changed the law. <laughs> From an eye for an eye, two children, he says, no, you must forgive, you must forgive, you must forgive. Seventy times seven. No, but even in the Old Testament, they taught you to forgive. That's right. love you. But now, the guys were leading according to the letter of the law. So Jesus says, no, 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 you must forgive. You know, must have compassion and mercy. Women, must we divorce her or not? He said, this has been said by them a whole time, that whosoever puts away his wife, let him give her a bit of divorce. But I say unto you, Whosoever puts away his wife, save for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery. And whosoever marries her, that is divorced, committed adultery. He is now straightjacketing the people, tightening the law, tightening the law, because they have become lax. So, in, this is the history of man, that over a period, any law, you are going to start playing with it. So, the spiritual physician, the prophet of God, comes along to rectify the situation. Now, in that process, Jesus Christ says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. You haven't got that capacity. To the Jews, his disciples, you haven't got that capacity. Everything that I tell you, you misunderstand. Everything. And again and again, Jesus tells them, ye of little faith, ye of little faith, how many times? Dozens of times. And he explains to them as he was explaining to little children. And they can't seem to understand. So he said, are you even yet without understanding? And when he's provoked further, he said, oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I be with you? I said, if Jesus was a Japanese instead of a Jew, he would have committed the honorable harakiri. Suicide. He would have committed suicide. But now he couldn't afford it. He's a Jew. So he said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Mm -hmm. For he shall not speak from himself, but what things so shall he hear, that shall he speak. And he shall declare unto you the things that are to come. He shall glorify me. Mm -hmm. We say that that spirit of truth is Muhammad. And he came and glorified Jesus. In the Quran, you read, I have these books, all available for you. Muhammad, the natural successor to Christ. This deals with that topic. But I'm telling you now that Muhammad is the natural successor to Christ in his prophetic teachings and in the evolution of religious history. Muhammad is the natural successor. So why did he only come 600 years later if he was going to lead those people who Jesus was talking to then? When, who, why, where were they left? He says, I won't leave you without anyone. So 600 years they were without the spirit of truth. But, but you see, for, for, for 4,000 years, we were without a Messiah. Look, look, my son. For, look, Adam sinned. And because of the sin entered the world. And there was no way out except the Son of God coming and dying for your sins. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. So now, I said, why did God wait for 4,000 years? He had the sacrifice of the tabernacle and for, foreshadow no, look, for as a temple which, measure which, until the Christ came. Which is they used to offer sacrifice which, for which, sins to read the book of Leviticus which is day easy. after day. If you had that injection to cure your AIDS, I don't need you to suffer for 4,000 years, giving you all kinds of byways and pathways. I said, look, if there is a, an infallible cure, that pill I give it to you. God Almighty waiting for 4,000 years. 4,000 years before sending his Messiah into the world. You're talking about 600, I'm talking about 4,000. Yes, my son. So I'm asking that I uh, hear about Saint Muhammad is a prophet. So everything, if you read in the Bible, uh, someone prophet like Jesus was prophet with by another people like Isaiah, prophet Jesus is coming like that. So we want to know who prophet that Muhammad Ali will be a prophet for <laughs> Christian. Right, right. You see, 
in the book of Isaiah, you remember the, I gave you an explanation about Muhammad, that he was in a cave. And in the cave, he saw this angel. Whether you believe it or not, this is Islamic tradition, history, he saw the angel. And the angel came and commanded him in his mother tongue, Iqra, I told you all that, read. And he said, I can't read. He said, read. And he said, I can't read. Then he, said, he read and he grasped, was to repeat, so he repeated. Now that is prophesied in the book of Isaiah. Chapter 29, verse 12. Open it, read it. Read it. In any, any book of history of Muhammad, you will find this, in, uh, this incident. About read and I can't read. Read and I can't read. In any book of Muhammad's life, written by Muslims or non-Muslims, you will find this anecdote. Isaiah 29, 12. So your whole gospel is based on that verse? No, no, no. This is just one. You want me to give the all? I can keep you here till midnight tonight. If you got the time, I have the patience. I got the energy. Man. Keep you here till midnight. No, no, wait. Let's, let's, 29, 12. Yeah. Open 29, 12. Yes, sir. Right. Read it, please. Read it aloud. Let me hear. Can you read from before and after? No. Read that verse, then you can read before and after the whole chapter. <laughs> 29, 12. Please read it aloud, somebody. May I read this? Yes, please. 12 says, And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I am not learned. Right. You see, word for word, and the book, meaning the revelation of God, yeah. is given to him that is not learned. Yeah. Muhammad is an unlearned prophet. The Quran testifies that he is an ummi, unlearned. The whole world says that he was an unlearned prophet. And he's told to read, and he says, I'm not learned. Word for word, look, 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 look. Word for word fulfillment. I don't have to stretch it, you know, by hook or by crook trying to feed Muhammad. Word for word, did Jesus say at any time, I'm not learned? No, but, but no, no, the book. Know, this could apply to thousands, hundreds of thousands. No, no, bring me another one. Bring me another prophet in your experience. There are hundreds mentioned there, including Jesus and John. No, it, did anybody no. at any time when he was given the book of God, mm -hmm. revelation of God, he said, read, and he says, I'm not learned. But, but Mr. Muhammad, uh, Mr. Deed, this, this is a very obscure verse. It cannot be. Right. Happen. So now you're but another one? Now, now you're in another one? Jesus. You're in another one? Yeah. Yes, right, right. Let's take another book of Deuteronomy. Uh, right. I, no, no, I'm answering. You said you want another one. I'll give you the answer. Another one. Uh, no, I don't understand it. Because if you said I, he, book, we are talking about prophecy. Yeah, that's a prophecy. It that means that if you said this book said it means Chaka and the prophet, this can believe it. Chaka is the first black man to prophet. If you hear in the history, did, did Shaga say that? As prophet, they said that no, no, the Shada say I'm a prophet. No, no then you believe oh, that. You wasting time. <laughs> this, if Shada said he's a prophet, you want to analyze. So he's prophet. Can I ask you a question? No, I've been asked for a long time. You asked a question. I've been asked for a long time. You have had your opportunity a number of times. You had a number of times that men asked a question about prophecy. Yes. All right. You are wearing to in the Song of Solomon. Eighteen. All right. In the Song of Solomon. Deuteronomy eighteen. You said Deuteronomy eighteen. Go on. I said the Song of Solomon. I show you Muhammad mentioned by name in your Bible. Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16. Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16. Please. You can't do two things at the same time, my son. Chapter 5, verse 16. That's right, yes. What is it? Song of Solomon. Yes. I'm so yeah, Song of Solomon, yes. So, huh? together lovely. This is my lover. Right. This is my friend, our daughters of Jerusalem. Right. <laughs> right. right. Now, that word, all together lovely. Yeah. In the Hebrew language, is Muhammadim. In the Hebrew Bible. If you have a Hebrew scholar anywhere that you know, you ask him to open up Song of Solomon in the Hebrew Bible, chapter 5, verse 16, and it says, the word altogether lovely is a translation of the word Muhammadim. Muhammad with Im. Im is a plural of respect in Hebrew. Not numbers, not Muhammad's. It's Muhammadim, Elohim. See? So, this is mentioned by name. Muhammad is mentioned by name in your Bible. Yeah, but the the beloved Muhammad of Solomon. Is even Muhammad a prophet? Because <laughs> many people call Muhammad today. 
Muhammad was the first Muhammad. Muhammad, the Prophet of Islam, was the first Muhammad known in history. There were no other people by the name of Muhammad. But Jesus, Jesus, we had them by the tens in the time of Jesus. Muhammad was the first Muhammad ever born. Yes, my son. Yes, we are here to learn about Islam. Yes. Uh, we Christians have the forgiveness of sins in our Lord Jesus Christ. How about the Islam? Where is the forgiveness of sins? In Islam, you repent before the Lord for what you have done. And God is not like Shylock, wanting his pound of flesh. He says in the book of Isaiah, I forgive sin for my own sake, not for sheep and goats and cows or a human sacrifice. I need no blood. God says, I need no blood. I forgive sin for my own sake. Is this is Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Same God says, the same God says in the, in the book of Isaiah. God doesn't that, contradict himself. No, no. He says, he says, he says, he says I, forgive sin, I forgive sin for my own sake. Where in Isaiah is that? Sorry? I have to look it up for you. If you don't know, I have to look it up for you. I forgive sins for my own sake. And I will not remember thy sins. In other words, he won't remind you, say, you know, you did such a thing, finish. Once he's forgiven you, he's forgiven you. Sorry, so you said you were more you Jewish than the God. Jews, and the Jews believe in the sacrifice. But what I want to ask you is, Christ finally, when Christ died on the cross, the Jews don't believe in Jesus Christ, yet they don't sacrifice anymore after his death. Short while after they stop sacrificing, how can the Jews, if they believe in the Old uh, Testament, do they not sacrifice anymore? Not that you should ask the Jews. But what I'm asking you is, you know, you, they were, uh, you believe in the Bible, you said, you believe in Moses and that, and Moses, you said you were more Jewish than the Jews. Right, right. The Jews so, were look, shedding look, blood at that time. I gave, you, exa I gave you examples. No, I said, look, no, you said you were more Jewish I, I, than Jews. I gave you examples as the taking of the shoes, then making ablution, then the form of prayer. In that context, I said, we are more Jewish than the Jews and more Christians than the Christians. I didn't say that in every aspect of our lives that we are more Jew, more Christian. You are pig eaters, we eat more pigs than you. No, no, there was no such thing that we are more Jewish than you, more Christian than you. You are a pig eater and we say we eat uh, something else besides us. So no, no. What we are talking about, now what we believe in, what we believe in, about the Bible. You see, you said you want to know what we believe about this book. We believe that Moses was inspired by God. Everything that God gave him was infallible. Word of God. Jesus was inspired by God. Everything God gave him was infallible. Word of God. Everything that God gave him. But we say that the books that are going in the name of Moses and Jesus, they are not the words of God. What God inspired Moses, is infallible. But now in the book supposed to be inspired by God, the five books of Moses supposed to be the books of Moses. We find in there word of God there. We find the word of the prophet there. We find the word of the historian there. And we find many things others besides which are not to be discussed in a public meeting. Like those incests and rape and murders and all that. But you have mentioned that, No, no. But no, they are not. This we are a select group. In the city hall of Durban, mm. you see, if I went and delivered a lecture, okay. I will not quote these verses. You know, we are a select group and a specialist in, in the field of missionary activity. I can share with you a heart to heart talk with you. Right. But not in a crowd of 2,000. My daughter is there, my wife is there, my sister is there. I can't. You well, people my are. Sister's you, here, you, uh, no, but you mentioned it no, here. You people are soldiers. You people are all soldiers. Not all of us. No. That's what you said. You are missionaries. Yeah. Some are missionaries, some are theological students. Right, right. So it's all, all training for the same field. You are all becoming soldiers. Okay. You, see, you are all soldiers. So with soldiers, a soldier we can talk yeah. on a soldierly language. So what we say is that what was given by God to Moses, we believe. What was given to David, we believe. What was given to Jesus, we believe. But those records are not preserved. I can't see any reason why Moses would go out of his way to belittle a brother prophet, Lot, to say he committed incest with his daughters. I can't see any reason, no motive no, for Moses to do that. may have done it for us to learn. Now, what have you learned in 2,000 years? Except there are people who are justifying incest on reading that. There have been men in court, white men, 
he was committing incest with his brothers and well, it's in the Bible. In the court of law, it is in the Bible. So, but it is forbidden in the Bible. No, does the Bible say the, no, no, your sin no, from the Bible? The Bible look, look, continues. No, 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 you are debating. You are debating now. Yes. I am answering you that when this word was given, as it was written by Moses, subsequently it says these two girls, they had children, Ammonites. From them came the Ammonites and the Moabites. Mm -hmm. And God Almighty tells the Jews when they came out of Egypt, they killed the Palestinians, Palestinians, men, women, and children. Mm -hmm. Even sucklings are not to be spared. Sucklings, babies mm -hmm. at the breast. Yes. Not even donkeys are to be spared. Yeah. This God of mercy, yeah. his killings had killed these Palestinians as black people. But you know why? Little children, why? You tell me. Okay. Sucklings, a baby. In, may, may I ask you? Yes? You're, you're yes, 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 I'm asking. A suckling now, why do you want to kill a suckling? Uh, well, let me answer. answer. Yes, yes, go ahead. Because there is an answer. Yeah. God, in his judgment, can use any of his four dreadful swords. He can use any judgment. He can use famine, he can use plague, he can use pestilence, he can use earthquakes, floods, famines. He can use warfare. And the Canaanites were in great sin, as archaeologists have discovered. They were into sodomy, they were into bestiality, they were into necrophilia, they were into every kind of sexual perversion, so that even the animals and the children would be infected with the kind of Donkeys, disease. Donkeys are infected with yes. Yes. bestiality. Yes. Of course, yes. donkeys. Yes. Yes. Bestiality. This is what the archaeologists have found. <laughs> the and this is why look what man does but, to but, man. But Mr. D. There's 25 million sodomites in America. Yeah. Donkeys. Have you seen donkeys climbing on donkeys? Uh, male to unmail. Mr. Mr. Dida, what I'm talking about and is that these the wickedness of that Canaanite culture at that time justified the judgment of Almighty God and he used the Israelite army as his instrument to kill you in the donkeys. Yes. Right. Okay. No, I accept your to eradicate no, no. the sin you and the donkeys. Even the disease. You and the little foals of donkeys. Even kill them all. If they all were diseased and the merciful God is killing donkeys for what sins? For what sins? They to also become sodomites. The donkeys are also sodomites. But must be that to get through the diseases, as you are aware. The donkey. Yes. Even yes. donkeys yes. can have venereal diseases, yes. Right. And, but now, says, kill these Palestinians, but the Ammonites and the Moabites thou shalt not touch. Yeah. Because they are the seed of Lord. So in other words, now these children of incest are to be protected. So they are a blessed people. Where does it say that? In your Bible, man. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me, where? We've never heard of it yet. Where? Yet, the it? Ammonites and the Moabites, yes. thou shalt not touch. Yeah, because it's quite That's in, in the Old Testament. It doesn't Tell say me. these children of incest. This would have been many generations later. No, no. but the thing is, is the Lord to judge people who have sinned many generations be, be, Because they are. So, the thing is this now. We say, this is not the Then, some 700 times, in the book of Genesis, alone, you read the expression, and the Lord said unto Moses, and Moses said unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, and Moses said unto the Lord. In Genesis? Yes, yes. But Genesis doesn't mention Moses. Who does mean Exodus? Genesis, the book of Genesis. Genesis. But the Lord doesn't speak to Moses in Genesis. In the, no in the first five books. Yes. Ah. Yes. What you, what Exodus, you, Genesis, Exodus. 700 times the expression occur and the Lord said unto Moses and Moses said unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. If the Lord spoke, then the Lord would say, I said to Moses and Moses said to me. If Moses spoke, he said, look, I told the Lord and the Lord said unto me. But this is the third person speaking or writing. He said, and the Lord said unto Moses. So it shows 700 times that God didn't dictate that book. Then in the last chapter, of Deuteronomy. Why can God not dictate something that relates what he said and what someone else said to him? But how does he say? If I am dictating, I said, look, I am telling you. Yeah. Peter. Yeah. And Peter told me. I asked Peter, Peter asked me. That is that is I, how I can I write a report on this. Uh, no, no, but I, and I, I can say, no, Mr. D. Rudd said this, and I said that. He said right, 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 and I said that. You see? that but you can also write no, in the third no, no, no. You, Peter, is unnatural for you but to go and report about this meeting and he said, now look, I asked Mr. Didat and Mr. Didat answered this. That's a natural thing. Then you speak in the third person. I don't know why you want to go out of your way to speak in the third person. But you know, we can uh, no, no, you, Peter, writing, and he said, Peter, Hammond, he asked Mr. Didat and Mr. Didat answered him. Mr. I want Didat, to know. Have you never written about yourself in the third person writing? I, I, Mr. Didat, I, I, listen, I, I, of course, I, I, I'm I, I, a writer and you're a writer. I, 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 we write about ourselves sometimes in the third person. 
Mahawat, the last book of Deuteronomy, it speaks about the death and burial of Moses. It's chapter, 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 chapter 34. Chapter. Yeah. It says, and there Moses died yeah. in the past tense, yes. in the land of Moab, yeah. over against Beth Peer. Mm -hmm. And no man knoweth of his sepulchre unto this day. Yes. Did Moses write that? No, obviously that was a footnote added under the garden. Is, God is it a footnote in your Bible? No. No. Is and it's it part of God's divine revelation. Most uh, footnote, not written, footnote written by who? Tom, Dick and Harry? No. Then who, who wrote the footnote? Maybe Joshua. Maybe Joshua. No, Joshua. but maybe, is that the word of God? There's no maybes about what's God's word because we right. read in Timothy uh, all scriptures as part of the God. Tea, the refreshments. We, we can continue. At the end, the refreshments are coming. Um, yeah. You believe everything Jesus said? Everything that Jesus said. Okay. Um, what about when Jesus said he is the only way to God? Yes. I quoted you that. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So what, 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 where does Muhammad pass it? I explained to you. I explained to you. My son, how I see it. See, Jesus said, I am the way. They want to know how to get to God. They think of geographical places. No, man. I am the way. The truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Right. He's telling this to his disciples that the way to God is personified in me. Look at me. The way I am going, you go, you will reach there. But my blood. He didn't say my blood. You say now, now you are consulting some, somewhere else now. He is telling them that I am the way to God. The truth of God is personified in me. Look at me. Real life is personified in me. Look at me. If you want to go where I'm going, you follow me. And every prophet of God, in his own time, in his dispensation, is the way to God. Every prophet of God. Where is that in the Bible? Moses. In the time of Moses, was Jesus the way? Yes, he, pr he prophesied of the, the future. Was Jesus the way to God in the time of Moses? He spoke of the coming prophet. Was, Je was Jesus the time of no. the way to God in the time of they Moses? They had to sacrifice animals. There so what had to be Jesus, blood. That means but Moses, Jesus' blood you know, covered everything. What, whatever God Almighty told Moses, the people, the children of Israel had to listen to that. Whatever. He said, you must not pick up fire on the Sabbath day. If you want to live, you don't do that. So in other words, whatever was given, he is the way to God. If you want to know the way to God, he said, look, God says, I will have no graven images before me. Not even the likeness of the things on earth, or in the heavens above, or in the waters beneath the sea, for my name is Jealous, and I'm a jealous God. I want nothing. And they took the golden calf. So God destroyed them. In other words, the way to God is, listen to the man of God, of his time. In the time of David, David is the way to God. In the time of Abraham, Abraham is the way to God. In the time of Jesus, in the time of Jesus, Jesus is the way to God. In the time of Muhammad, Muhammad is the way to God. Why didn't God just say, I'm the way to God? What happens when there's a new prophet? Do you listen to him then? Because he said a man of his time. So well, so we need the prophets, all the prophets we have mentioned in the Bible. So we need the prophet. They they each, the each and every prophet of God in his life, in his dispensation, he is the firstborn of God. And as such, you may be older than him, but you have to listen to him. Jesus Christ is the first son of God. He is first begotten of God in his time. And the elders of Israel had to listen to him. So he is the way to God. Because whatever God wants them to do, he is telling them through Jesus. But Mr. Diaz, then we need a prophet to get to God. Right. Well, so so that we, we saw prophet. The prophet. You've got a problem. Oh, yes. Right. No, no, no. You're standing there and I'm sitting here and we have a problem. Here's the prophet. No, he's no, dead. No, no, no. He's, he's, he's dead. The way. He's dead. No, no, no. You see, Jesus if you read, if you read Luke, Jesus is alive. If you if you read Luke, <laughs> Luke chapter 16, <laughs> 16, 19. Yes. You read there about Father Abraham and Lazarus in his bosom, and that rich man who's simmering in hell. So that rich man is crying, says, Father Abraham, send Lazarus to wet his hands and put him in, in, in my mouth to assuage my thirst. So Father Abraham says, look, there's a barrier between us, and this can't be breached. So, so look, in that case, what about sending Lazarus back to the world to go and warn my brothers yes. that they may avoid 
So Abraham said that they have Moses and the prophets. Yes. So if they would not listen to them, they would not listen even if one were to go back from the dead. Right. So in other words, now you have Moses, but Moses was dead and buried. The Moses testified of Christ. I said Moses was dead and buried. Yes. yes. But his teachings are still there with you. Yeah. His, teachings. his teachings, God's teachings. Through Moses, thou shalt not uh, commit adultery, thou shalt not have any other given. But God oh. also spoke that himself. He didn't just... Yeah. So what are the, the, te the teachings, the teachings of God were contained in the books of Moses. That means Moses was there. There you go. See, though, though Moses is not alive, Jesus is with us in his teachings. In his teaching, he's here with us. So why did many of the Pharisees and the, the priests of that time recognize him as the Messiah? As the fulfillment they didn't, of the they didn't recognize him. Yes, they did. Yes, yes, they did. The bulk of them, they said crucify him. Yeah. Yes. Oh, the but bulk many, of them. Many, many, many. But that was handful, like, handful. 3,000? A handful? That was yeah. after his alleged crucifixion. So uh, 3,000. Yes. After. So, so. In his lifetime, those 12 were the only people around him. Yeah. And they yeah. all, they yeah. all forsook him and fled. If you remember, yeah. they all, that's what your Bible says. They all forsook him and fled. And the next verse says, and they followed him at a distance. So, Doug, can I ask you another question? Yes. Um, Jesus Christ, okay, when he came along, I, I grew up in a different background. Before I became a Christian, I was atheist for a while. And one of the things that really caught my eye is that when Jesus Christ uh, was here on the earth, he was the only uh, prophet. Do you say he's a prophet or do you say he's the son of God? You say he is a mighty messenger of God. I'm asking you. A prophet, you a pro prophet, okay, you a mighty a messenger. Okay, you say a prophet. But Jesus Christ was the only one to claim to be the Son of God. And God was the only one to, to put a revelation. When he got baptized in the water, after John baptized him, when he came out, God descended over above him in, a, in the form of a dove and said, This is my beloved Son. And he was the only prophet as far as I know. He said, he's the, only, he said he's the only Son. Now, who God said he is. No, no, wait, 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 wait. He said he was the only Son. He's the only one who God I'm said that his son. God, God has pointed to this, what you call But how prophet. many sons has God got? He's only got one, Jesus Christ. You don't know your Bible, my son. Look, you don't know your Bible. God has got sons by the tons in your yes. Bible. We're talking about born son. Oh. Begotten. Begotten. Yes. Son. God speaks to David and he says, I will declare a decree unto thee that thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Yeah. Please, come Peter. May we give thanks first. Yes. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for good health, for good food. We thank you, Lord God, for the fellowship we can enjoy together in the name of your Son. We pray, Lord God Almighty, that you will give us your peace. We thank you for the opportunity we have to discuss these things. We ask that you, Holy Spirit, will lead us into all truth. That you will enable us to understand what is your true and revealed word, that you will make us faithful to it. We pray that you will be honored, that you will be glorified. Lord God Almighty, in Jesus' name. Please. Please help yourself, Peter. And we may take of these booklets. Yes, yes. Ah. One each. Uh, four. <coughs> take them. We saw there were, there's quite a variety of booklets. If we want some of the others, is it we where might we get on them? Thank you. I think... I noticed that you have been videoing this. May I ask what what will be done with the video? Do you have different teaching videos, or, or what is the useful? Is it for, son, this is for teaching hobby. people. This is his hobby. If he can answer that question. <laughs> You use videos a lot. It look, we saw Dan says you have this open. Got Seventy-eight. Seventy-eight different ones. Is it correct that the propagation center sends out videos to all over the world? It's not just Africa. I'd be interested in some statistics. Do you have any? Statistics, how much literature you print each year, or how many videos you produce a month, or anything like this? We do this, we say, without counting. But I've yeah. seen some of your booklets have got like a million copies, or yeah, here. Half a million, yes. 
or this one? And this is a hundred thousand, and then twenty-five thousand. Yeah. Uh, this is your latest. Yeah, this is the latest, and that one there. Ah, yes, yes. yes. I've seen this one already. Mm -hmm. so, Dirac, can I give this to you? Sure. This will expose the famous false prophet Bishop Tutu. I would love you to read it. I will. Thank you. Yeah, that's very nice. Try the chili bites, you know. The biscuits, you have them at home always. <laughs> Try the chili bites. Yeah, this, this. Biscuits you always have. Try these, yes. You don't get them in Zambia. <laughs> these, these, these. Biscuits you get in Zambia. Yeah, but not this. I haven't had these for a long time. We bought the Koran. I think they're selling them for ten dollars. I'd like to say, if you're ever in Cape Town, you're welcome to come to our flat. <laughs> Honestly, I would, I would, we would like to do that. Okay, I'm not just saying. I'm not. Not me. Spot it right. Just. I hear you. But as a gentleman, the people are telling you. Mm. But then. That's not what I think. Giving a C point, for example. I'm from America and we um, at our flat in Cape Town many times people come to the door colored and blacks and we invite them in and have tea with them and stuff. And so so far we haven't gotten too many dirty looks or anything. So. <laughs> We're just changing. Mm. We're just changing. Sure, we've been mm. talking about the past 40 years. Yeah. Yeah. In the next four years, things might be different. Mm. Yes, my son. Yeah, did you know? Actually, I'm going to go to En ek sal graag vir vir die oom wil sê uit respect vir die ouderdom. Net om te wys ek het nie geen rassisme in my nie. In spuite van die feit dat ek Afrikaan was. I didn't understand the whole of it except a few words. I also tried to learn Afrikaans. But my way of learning was using the Bible for language. Because what I know in English, I look up those verses in Afrikaans and I memorize that Afrikaans. Ek maar ek sa jylle die waar heet. Dit is van jylle voordelig dat ek wat gaan. Want as ek is nie, we gaan nie, sal die troester nie na kunnen kom nie. Maar as ek weg gaan, sal ek hong na jylle stier. So I'm telling the Afrikaan, that your language is a unique language. Absolutely unique. Every language is unique. But your is more special. You see, you are using four negatives to prove a positive. Maras ekas ni, vecha ni, saile trostar ni, naja da kom ni. Four negatives to prove a positive. No language on earth does that. Do you know that? And this is what Jesus is saying. If I don't go, he won't come. But if I go, I will send him. And we say, that prophet is Muhammad. That trostar is Muhammad. Now what about the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost is gay. The Archangel gay. You say that the angel Gabriel came to Mary. This is what I miss about living in David. And in the match is it, and the Holy Ghost came on to Mary. So the Holy Ghost and the Archangel Gabriel are synonymous things. They're not two different things. So you know your head. <laughs> but no, that's your Bible. The Bible says Luke says that Gabriel came to Mary to give her the good news. And Luke says, uh, Matthew says, Says that the Holy Ghost came. So who is the Holy Spirit? Is Archangel Gabriel. Uh, what about Genesis 1? It says the Spirit of the Lord brooded over us. That was it, the Archangel? Could be, could be anything. But it doesn't make any difference. Because, Mr. Dillard, the question I want to ask you is what is your theology of the nature of man? What, how does the Islam worldview see man? What is his nature? Basically, yeah. Santo. He, he is neither for heaven nor for hell. No. He is on probation here. The Quran says you are on probation here. Yeah? You make the grade. You follow the laws and commandments of God. You urge his blessing. You have disobeyed him. You deserve the fire of purification. So you wouldn't agree with the prophet Jeremiah when he says the heart of man is extremely deceitful and no, wicked above no, all things? No, no, the Bible says, He the Lord hath made men upright.
But he had sought out many inventions. He, the Lord, God Almighty, has made men upright. Everybody upright. But you have sought out all your funny, funny ideas. Yes. Worshipping men and monkeys, elephants and snakes. But we know that man you fell. fell. He has yeah. fallen now. So, so, but now in the fallen stage, what do you teach? How he is? Because surely we are not like the original Adam. Yeah. So come right with God. Yeah. And the teachings of the prophets are there. Jesus told you to worship the God, the Father in heaven. But tell me, can a leopard change his spots? Or can a wicked, those who are accustomed to doing wicked, uh, cease to do wicked? Yeah. This is not a leopard. This is man. And you can change just like that. That. Like Jesus, like Jesus, calling the guy, to say, come follow me. The man's like, Jesus, you follow me. And the man followed it. He's got the right path. Just like that. They were all leopards. They were all leopards, all Jews. Can I give you a testimony of why I believe in Jesus Christ? Same old story. Same old story. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not brought up in the Christian religion. I'm not, I'm not brought up in the Christian religion. What other religion? What religion are you born in? I'm born in what you would call Hindu philosophy. You were not born in Hindu philosophy. Your father and mother were going to the church. Yes. No, they weren't. Where were they going to? They were Temple. in theosophical societies. Right, right. Stuff. But your background is Christian. No, I never got taught the ways of Jesus. You didn't go to Sunday school? No. I'm in the country. You are a human. No, I never, I'm not telling you, I never got brought up in the ways of the Christian religion. So how did you come to Christianity? Well, this is what I'm trying to tell you. Right. Is that before, okay, I was a complete crook by nature. I used to deceive people, I used to lie. Even if I didn't need to lie, I used to lie. Anybody wants tea? Thank you. I was a drug addict for 15 years as well. In other words, the condition I was in, I was actually in the grip of the devil. What you would call a slave. I was a slave to my desires. I was a slave to what we call a slave to sin. All right. But now, many times, they, they put me in prison, they put me in rehabilitation centers, and psychologists at school, things like this. And all the time, I tried to change, but I could never change because I was in the grip of sin and I was in the grip of the devil. But why is it that when I turned to the Lord Jesus Christ, I was delivered instantaneously. I didn't have to repent of lying or stealing. Suddenly I didn't lie. Suddenly I didn't swear. So, um, suddenly I was br the drug addiction which, which, no, which no government hospital, which no psychologist could break me free from, I was broken free of completely. Hmm? This is the power of Jesus Christ. This is the reason that I believe in Jesus Christ. It's because I was delivered from the same story, of sin. The same story I heard from Sagat. Same story. Same born again, you know, life transformed. You see? Same from that Jim, because of Jesus. That Jim Baker. Same story. Yesterday's paper, Sunday paper, the Sunday time. You read there about a Christian church, all the four ministers, bishop and all, they're all <coughs> Born again. Huh? Born again. No, they, they were all born again Christians, but they're all adulterers. They've been molesting the, the congregation. Yeah, I'm telling you about so, me. But and no Muslim does it. I say Muslim also, but now he's not boasting. You see, these guys are boasting, they're born again, and they're changed, transformed. But they're accepted. We are not boasting. No, no, no. You see, everyone, Jim Baker, Marvin Gorman, this. This, this but there's four, a lot of good men who haven't four, fallen. Four guys yesterday's paper, all belonging to one church, and all are high priests, and they all have been molesting the members of the congregation. All. So in other well, we know in the, we know that they are so, synagogues of Satan. We know this. You know, right. So the thing is now you 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 look. This is what you're claiming. But you, when it really comes to the crunch, we don't because Swagat, You see, in my debate with him, he says that you Muslims, you know, you are trying to lead a straight jacket in life because you are afraid somebody is going to cut your toe, cut your nose. So therefore, I don't drink for that reason. He says. But we, we are born again Christians, and Christ has ended our lives, and we sin no more. 
we sin no more. Not like you, Muslim. Did he say that? Yes. Yeah. Well, no Christian not in the can say you don't sin anymore. Yeah. He is a rich man. Yeah, but that's a, who can point a finger at me? Yeah. And how can he? But look, look, Peter, if you said that, I know you're a liar. I know you're a hypocrite, but I can't say Anybody that. Anybody who no, says no, they I, don't sin I, is a liar. Right, right. But none of us have no, said on that. On your face, I can't tell you, Peter. But nobody here has said that. Yeah. The people mm. said, now look, you got, you got the spirit in you. The Holy Spirit. Of the Holy Spirit is in Spirit you. of Christ. Right. So you're not tempted. No, I'm not tempted. tempted. You're tempted. Yeah. Then the Christ. Spirit is not in you. Why? Uh -huh. Look. The the spirit, what is Spirit? Does it permeate your whole being, or is it somewhere out? Okay, some what? places is there, and some places not there. In you, the Spirit. Does it permeate every every particle of you, or is it only in your head, or in your heart, or in your nose? Where is it? He must get over from. Wait, but the spirit is permeating you. Okay. So if the spirit is permeating you, the spirit of God, then there is no space for the devil. Excuse me, can I ask you something? What I'm trying to tell you is that, 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 that the power of sin Stop. has been broken. The grip of sin has been broken. Okay. I do that, that's, sure that's what Swaggart said. Now listen to me. That's what Marvin yeah. Gorman said. <laughs> that's what Jim Becker said. And this is what every no, Christian no, said. No, there is no teaching anywhere in any holy scripture that when we, we become exactly that's like God right. in this age. This is the hope Jesus of the Christian. Jesus told you to be perfect. Even as a heavenly father. What is the word? What is the word? Do you know? It? Listen to it. Be perfect. Yes, the word is be you mature. The Greek is mature. The English is a wrong translation. Be mature. But now, but now, now you me. This is the Bible you give me. Yeah, I know the Greek. You use that Bible. Right, right. So you give me the Bible. And Jesus said, be he perfect. Yes. I'm quoting from there. Yeah. Mature. Even as your heavenly father is perfect. So you look at the Greek word. Do a study on the Greek word. Now you tell that to the Zulu. You tell to everybody, you say, this is serious. Yeah. No, you claim to be a learned man. You're disputing with me. You say, you're the one who's unbelieving, not me. You believe in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Ghost. You believe yes, in the Holy Ghost. Yes, speaking King James The Holy Ghost, you speak. You believe in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. In the Holy Ghost. Now, what is the ghost in, 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 in Greek? Oh, well, okay. What's, what's it there? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's the Holy Spirit, it's Numa. Numa. Yeah. And what is spirit in Greek? Numa. And ghost? Well, that's the, that's the King James translation. So, that's so spirit so and wind, so yes. Both one and the same thing. Oh, the right. same. The same thing. So, you see, now, that is the Holy Ghost. Okay, you say Holy Spirit. Okay. Yeah. You know, we're not talking about the yes. same thing. Yes, yes. we're talking about the same thing. I'm asking about this, but we take a look. <laughs> Which year they studied this? Uh, right, this correct. <laughs> this from the very inception, from the very beginning, the first five years. Remember I told you about it? Yeah. <laughs> Subsequently, every time there was a new rose, the new the rose. The Christian deputation is asking Muhammad. Said, Oh Muhammad, tell us now what is your concept of God? So Muhammad, he doesn't say, Well, you see, you know, we believe in the same God like you, like Father Abraham, he believed in God, and Israel, Jacob, we believe in God. He doesn't speak like that. He pauses, and the angel of God commands him. Which is now the hundred and twelfth chapter of the Quran. This is what is made to say. Yeah. It's made to say. In Arabic. Allahu Ahad. Say he is God the one and only. Allah Samad, God the eternal absolute. Lam Yalid Walam Yulat. He begetteth not, nor is he begotten. Walam Yakun Lahu Ufu and Ahad. And there is nothing like him to be finished. Story is close. And that is what comes. So these words that we're given are the words of God. While Muhammad is talking, like you're asking me, I'm not yeah, okay. telling you. These are my words, these are your words. Then when you ask me, said, what is your concept of God? So I open the book. Muhammad didn't open the book. He had a revelation. But now I open the book and I said, now our concept is, say, he is God the one and only. God the eternal absolute. He began that not not is a good and there is none like unto him. That's my concept of God. So like that, as the need arose, 
chapters, verses, chapters, verses, all that what you see in Arabic was the revelation that was given by God Almighty to the Holy Prophet Muhammad. This is the Quran. This is the translation. And this is the commentary. By the learned man, he's trying to make things easier for you. Dilute the subject matter. I understand for this but What is the difference between Islam and the Christian religion? Do you find things to make it different to the Bible? No, we say the Bible is not the word of God. It's not the word of God. That's right. But the word of God is there. The word of God is there. The word of the prophet is there. The word of the historian is there. And many other things are there. That's okay. But this is not the word of God. Now with us, with us, I understand. It's meant that with the religion is Right. 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 But the word of God can be quoting for like the, the God tells the Jews, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord of God, the Lord is one. So maybe the God gave the word, those words are the words to Moses. Like in the book of Isaiah, God says, I, I am God and there's none else. I am God and there's none like me. Now, these words came out of the mouth of Isaiah. But we know he is not claiming to be God. Although he sounds like, I, I am God. But no, he's only quoting. He's quoting God. So we said, these are the words of God. That's what you're hearing. I, I am God, that means it's God talking, not as I am. The word put through his mouth. So when Jesus is quoting God, the word of God, then he says, and, but I say unto you, so it has been said by the of old time, and I for an eye and a for a tree, but I say unto you, so who is this I? He said Jesus. So he said, these are the words of God. See, there's a word of God in the Bible, the prophet in the Bible, like again and again, as it has been said by them of old time, that whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a bit of divorce. But I say unto you, who is this I? He said, Jesus. So he said that. Here's what he's saying now, but I say unto you, and what he says is the word of the prophet. Then we read again that while he was going forth into the way, he saw a fig tree in the distance with leaves. Happily, he came up to it, wanting to find figs thereon, but when he came, there was nothing but leaves. But the season was not yet. That's whose words are they? They are not the word of God. They are not the word of Jesus. They are the word of the historian. And I witness are your witness. An eyewitness might have seen and heard, or a you witness or heard the story. It's not the word of God, it's not the word of Jesus. While he, Jesus, was going forth in the way, he, Jesus, saw a fig tree in the distance with leaves. Happily, he, Jesus, came up to it. Not even find figs there on, but he found nothing but leaves, for the season was not yet. So we said, This is not the word of God, this is not the word of the prophet, and this is the word of a historian. Well, this means this Bible you take the word of God on. This is only. This is the only word of God. Now, we have stories, like what I told you now, that the angel came and told Muhammad, read. And he said, I'm not learning. The angel commanded him a second time, he said, read. And he said, I'm not learning. Now, in this book, you open that, it's the 96th chapter. But there's nothing there about Muhammad saying, I'm not learning. It just says, read, read in the name of the Lord and cherish your creator, created man from a mere flood of congealed blood, read and thy Lord is most bountiful. There is that dialogue, what I told you just now, that Muhammad said, I can't read, and I can't read, and after that he runs home to his wife. Nothing is mentioned in the book. Why? Because these are the words of Muhammad. So when he said, I can't read, whose words are they? The words of Muhammad. So this is not the word of Muhammad. That he was in a cave, whose words are they? The word of the historian, me, I'm telling you, that he was in a cave. It's not here. Because God didn't say, my Muhammad was in the cave, and it was a 40th, he was just 40 year old, and you know, it was the 27th of the month of Ramadan, and then I sent my angel Gabriel. No, 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 God doesn't talk like that. He just talks like telegram, whatever he wants to tell you, he tells you. The rest is the word of the historian, but for us, it's in a separate book. The word of the prophet, in a separate book. Our fairy tales, no, our, your Bible, everything is in one. Word of God is there, word of the prophet is there, word of the historian is there, and your pornographic among the Jews is also there. Pornography is also there. 
with us, word of God separate, word of the prophet separate, word of the historian separate, and our fairy tales and pornography books also separate. But they are not equated. You don't say this book of pornography is equal to this, or this word of the historian is equal to that. No. Book of the Quran is the Quran. Uh, the word of the historian is the word of the historian. Mr. Dida, we, we have a few more questions. The Bendigo, can we ask? We've got a few questions. So, how many books are there? Well, that's all one book. There are 114 chapters. But the book is one. Okay. Okay, my skill, but then I want time after. <coughs> How come Jesus was the only prophet that was sinless? Why was Muhammad sinless? Why was Moses sinless? Let him sign his name, eh? Give him a little chance. <laughs> Been working hard. That's okay. You see, Jesus said, judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, ye shall be measured unto you. It's a warning he is giving us all. Don't do that. Don't sit in judgment. Because whatever standard you're going to use, will be used against you. So I follow his advice. We in the house of Islam, we do not discriminate between the prophets of God. We don't judge one against the other. Who is greater, Moses or Jesus? No, I'm no, no, no. I'm just not talking now. I said, we don't enter into that field. Who does God love most, Jesus or Muhammad? Jesus or Moses? I said, look, this is not for you and for me. These are all his servants, and he can judge them as he wants. That's me. Awesome. When you say no faults, no false, sinless, then I take your Bible and I says, you know, he went and killed 2,000 pigs with Jesus Christ. Do you know that? <laughs> Jesus Christ went and killed 2,000 pigs. He didn't kill them. Yeah, they went over the cliff. He gave it. They he ran over the cliff. The, the, the demons took them over. Yeah, but the who, who gave the, the, the demon the permission? Jesus. Right. So he's, in other words, he's capable. Because if D. Clerk says, hang D. Dot, D. Clerk doesn't, D. Clerk doesn't come along to catch me and no, no, takes me to the gallows. What is 2,000 pigs? No? That's nothing. It's dead to have a soul. Okay. There's no soul in that pig. So you destroy somebody's property. 2,000 pigs belong to somebody. <laughs> uh, it didn't belong to the Jews. Look, it didn't belong to the Jews. They weren't supposed to have it. Right, right. So they, 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 they didn't belong to the Jews. They belong to the Gentiles. Now, have you a right to go and destroy somebody else's property? Property. Anybody else's property. God has got you are a vendor. You know what's a vendor? God you go along God's got the right to do anything. Right. Right. It's his pigs. It's his pigs. If it wants to do it, he can kill it. God doesn't have to bounce up to your level. Okay, Mr. Okay, I have another Mr. question. <laughs> um, Isaiah chapter 53, where it prophesies, and we believe it's prophecy about Jesus. What, is, what does Islam say about Isaiah chapter 53? No, no, we don't go into that. We say we believe in Jesus. We believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers right, of God. So all that, we said, okay. that book, by the way, we can talk, by the way. In other words, but now, we have, that's not a book of authority for us. Isaiah. The, you don't look at us, the Bible. The book, this is not the book of authority for us. So this doesn't mean anything to you, this no, prophecy? No, not really. But, times we can share. Uh, well, what do you think of this? I said, no, this is what I think. This is how I see it. Okay. So we can discuss, but it is not a book of authority. So even if we discussed and you agree this was Jesus, it still wouldn't no, no. be your authority? No, no. Jesus, we accept him. Right, as I understand that. As a Messiah. So, right. so look, we accept him. But you say he was one minute. We accept. Because this explains his ministry quite well. Yeah, right. So I said, we accept the man as a mighty messenger of God. He said, love him, respect him, revere him, follow him. But don't worship him. He said, our fight is only, he said, don't worship him. So you don't have an answer to Isaiah 53 then? Because it says that he, uh, well, it talks a lot about what Jesus did, but one of them says, for he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. So that's very specific about his death. No, 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 you ask the Jews. The purpose of you ask the Jews, who is he talking about? He's talking about the child to be born. No, yeah, immediately. Immediately. Not, no, not, well, not, that's not what they say. say. Some no. of them will so, so now, that is the Jews. This is the Jewish book. No. That book is the Jewish book which you have inherited. Okay. And now you are looking at it to justify everything that you want to justify. Well, who does it fulfill then? Was there a child that, that fulfilled it? You ask the Jews. 
first. I've asked the Jew. He doesn't have an answer either. Right. Because the answer is Jesus. Okay, Rishi. Close his book. And if he says, look, man. Five minutes before we close the office for prayer. We have to close okay. the office for okay. prayer. Rishi, yes. the Bible says all scriptures are inspired. And you see, because I'll never get there. Okay. See, when you now, how do you remove some, some of the scriptures? Look at it as a whole scripture. And it's profitable for. Yes. Doctrine. Yeah. Doctrine. Reproof. Yeah. Correction, correction, and instructions under righteousness. Yes, <coughs> it must serve four purposes. Mm -hmm. If it's a book, is if it's a word of God, it must serve one of these four purposes. It must be your doctrine to teach you what is right and what is wrong. Okay. It must be reproved. Look, you did such and such thing, you'll be punished. Reproof, or correction. So no, not like this lesson, but like that. Or mm -hmm. instructions under righteousness, encouraging you to do good. If a thing, anything that's written, if it's not covered by this four, then it is out. This is the test given to you. How do you know whether this word is the word of God? Four. So now, according to the four, according to these four tests. According to you, so you ask me the question and you're listening to him. You ask me the question and you're listening to him. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> amazing, amazing, you people. There's so many distractions. Thank you very much. Well, you ask me the question and I'm talking and you're listening to But you just told us to forgive 70 times, sir. No, no, that's not me. Oh, you don't have to No, I don't have to do that. If it calls for forgiveness, it will do you good. Forgive. If it's not, to call you up, so call you up. That's his time. Thank you for speaking to us with such an interesting manner. Thank you for the lovely, beautiful. Yes.